Good evening and welcome to the February 20th meeting of the Longmeadow Select Board. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So uh, before I open uh, resident comments, uh, there is an announcement. Uh, something that hopefully some people have been thinking about recently, uh, but the, uh, the Longwater Select Board is accepting nominations for the annual Citizen of the Year Award. Uh, the re recipient will be announced at the annual town meeting on May 8th, uh, 2018. Letters of nomination should be mailed to the Select Board office at 20 William Street and or emailed to Deb House, dhouse at longmeadow.org by Friday, April 6th. Um, so uh, hopefully you've been thinking of who would be a good person um, and make that nomination. And if uh, we can move into resident <coughs> comments, I don't know if we have any tonight, no? All right, so we can go to select board comments. Uh, the last time I was in this room was the meeting of the school committee and, and it was pretty packed uh, and there were a lot of resident comments and uh, it was something to see, and I was really glad I could get to it. And the, um, you know, there was just an outpouring of support for the superintendent of schools. As you know, um, from time to time, um, you know, the, the committees or the boards don't always agree with the work being done with folks that they're um, sort of watching over. We recently had a, a meeting with uh, about a complaint to the town manager and um, you know so people didn't know what that was about and uh, but we are going to have a report on folks who looked into it uh, next meeting but this uh, school committee has had a couple of meetings uh, privately discussing issues with the superintendent as uh, you know and <coughs> most of what I know is from the newspaper uh, so <laughs> probably as people know the board has not been uh, contacted for any reason in terms of uh, there's no lawsuits, there's no uh, major complaints or victims coming forward. So it's really in the hands of the school committee and you know we as a our board uh, you know is not going to uh, judge them harshly. We have no idea what they're discussing in private. Uh, they haven't come to us. Uh, they don't need to come to us. Um, but I would like to say, as a personal, uh, my personal opinion, as my comment as a select board member is that I do support the uh, the superintendent and the uh, so the the outpouring of support um, was pretty amazing. When I looked at the folks that this, who were sitting here uh, and, and the last meeting uh, with the school committee, and, and two of them started crying, I said, "Well, this is a pretty significant day." Uh, superintendents don't always have that kind of affection from all the folks working for them. So it's uh, uh, pretty significant. We do know that he's turned in his resignation um, and the school board would make a decision if they were going to accept it or not. And um, I know I personally hope that uh, it doesn't come to that and that things can be worked out. And, um, and that's all I have to say as far as um, select board comments. Uh, is there anyone else has any comments uh, as we get started? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, there's not much, I don't know how you can ever address such an issue other than to say, I hope the students in Florida are successful and hmm. going to their legislators to start to bring awareness to the issue which we experienced in our country this week. Uh, I, I'd like to see the movement go across the country. We'll just have to see if this is the final straw before we actually take some type of constructive efforts to uh, stop these shootings in our schools. And that's, that's all I have, Tom. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, so then uh, we're going to um, change the schedule a little bit, um, although we'll hit everything. And I guess I would ask uh, our Board of Health um, I don't think I'm here. Why don't we start with just approval of minutes? Here, approval of minutes. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we have. Yeah, we should pay for Beverly. Yeah. She's coming. Okay. I'd, I'd like to mo move that we approve the minutes of the regular select board meeting of February 5th as, as distributed. Okay. Do we have a second? second. Okay. 
Uh, all those in favor? I have to abstain. Oh, you would abstain. Okay. All right. Um, the next thing is we do have the um, appointments. I guess we can do that. Um, we had interviews conducted on our meeting on February 5th. And so we have um, a couple of folks that we would like to um, vote on. Uh, for the Cultural Council, we have Tessie Planky, who is looking for, uh, who would be appointed to a one three year term expiring on 6 30 19. Do we have a motion to? Yeah, I, to I'll, I'll move that we appoint Tessie Planky to a three year term expiring June 30th, 2019, to the uh, Cultural Council. Okay, a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? I move okay. we approve Melinda Cropsey for a three year term expiring uh, 6 30 18 to the Historic District Commission. Second. Okay, all those in favor? All right. I move we approve uh, the, we appoint Tim McKenna to a three year associate term uh, expiring June 30th, 2020 to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. <coughs> Okay, all those in favor? All right, and I see that Deb uh, Hirshhorn is here, our Board of Health. Uh, so if you would, uh, or I don't know, I may have the wrong first name, but please come on up. And, yes. Yeah. Beverly. Beverly. Huh? Beverly. Beverly. Okay, thank you. Beverly. Yeah. Soundly. Mary Pat Toy here as a long time member of the Board of Health. Okay. asked to. Uh, all right. Please one board member. All right. Good. Kind of diffuse the diffuse. <laughs> share the share the steam. All right. So um, you have three proposals right. that you're making. You have three draft regulations, and <clears throat> under. Um, <coughs> Massachusetts general law, actually, the Board of Health can promulgate its own regulations and they do not need the approval of the select board. Mm -hmm. But um, in as much as there's been a lot of publicity about at least one of these regulations, and to be honest, I think that I'd like to keep the board of select, the select board informed of what generally um, things that we do that will affect the whole town. Mm -hmm. um, I provided copies of the draft regulations and a mm -hmm. short synopsis. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Under the cover of don't be in trouble alone, is that done? <laughs> no. <laughs> Put it this way, we have, you know, we, we have the authority if mm -hmm. it, it per pertains to protecting and promoting the public health and we'll have to uh, take responsibility for uh, the, any consequences from this regulation. But mm -hmm. it's also a good idea to keep you informed and get your input. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Mark. I propose we just take these one at a time and start with the least painful one. Well, for me, at least the least painful one would be the tanning facilities regulation. And just, can you just give a quick summary, Beverly, of the, the changes of okay. what you're proposing for that? Well, um, we promulgated the, we're trying to promulgate these regulations in response to a change in Mass Department of Public Health regulations, mm -hmm. um, which um, to protect the public health, um, raise the minimum age for people who can um, go to tanning parlors to age 21 uh, because of the dangers of skin cancer. And there were a number of other provisions in the state regulation that had changed over the years. So we wanted to update our local <coughs> regs, um, which we would have the power to then enforce, to be consistent with the state regs, and in some cases actually slightly stronger. Um, and um, although we don't have any tanning parlors at the moment here, mm -hmm. they've come and gone over the history, it depends on the economics or whatever. There aren't any current um, permittees, but you know somebody could call tomorrow. And so we wanted to uh, get these regs um, on board so that um, we, we could at least be consistent with the state and, and before any permittee came along. Mm -hmm. 
And so the state is recommending age 21. For, They're not only recommending it, they, they legislate it. They legislate it, okay, yeah. So it's not a record. It, they, they, the Mass Department of Public Health regulation state age 21. They handle like drinking. And, but is smoking 21? Uh, okay. Now it is in our town. <laughs> Oh, Most towns, Most. about 300 out of the 351 are, are right. 21 right are now, 21. including the city of Springfield. Yeah, so. Um, and many of our surrounding towns, so. All right, yes, Mark. Yeah, unless anybody has any other thing, I, I'd, I'd move, make a motion that the select board endorse the, uh, the Board of Health's promulgation of this regulation on tanning facilities. Okay. Second. Then we have a second. All right, any discussion, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Okay. I just want to mention, this year you, uh, <clears throat> you, you named an additional associate member to the board, Michael Umano, who mm -hmm. happens to work in the radiology department oh, at right, the yes. State Medical Center. And he was a great help in um, reviewing some of the technical aspects of this regulation, which, to be very honest, uh, um, I, it really assisted me in making sure that they were up to date and mm -hmm. consistent with general guidelines. And so I appreciate, that was a wonderful appointment you made and it, yes. in the nick of time, I would say. Oh, good, good. So, All right. so the next one would, would be refuse mm -hmm. and recycling regulation. Okay. Maybe a little bit controversial, but perhaps Okay. Not. Um, actually, um, these regs are only a confirmation of what is already a DEP regulation. Um, there's a ban on recyclables and other materials going into the regular um, refuse stream, solid waste stream. Mm -hmm. And anything that's a recyclable or a hazardous waste already has to be separated out. So. Um, this is just a, a local version of this state regulation with a couple of additions to um, prevent public health nuisances of like uh, trash coming off of the trucks or leaking or whatever. The, the implications for our town is that you already have a contract for curbside waste pickup uh, with waste management and for pickup at school and town sites. So it's not going to affect your waste contract at all because your contractor already does this. The issue is how good a job are the contractors that pick up at uh, private sites in town such as restaurants, the mall, you know, the dumpsters behind the mall. And um, they, they should be doing a good job because if they don't, their wastes are turned back at the dump when they come with recyclables and they're not supposed to be in with the regular waste. They should be back, turned back at, at uh, wherever you, you deposit your refuse. But we want to make sure that um, they're a little bit more careful in separating out the different streams such as plastic, cans, um, and paper to make sure they're a little doing a little better job of that because I don't see um, except for re, uh, except for cardboard and paper separate cardboard and paper containers I, it doesn't it's a little bit unclear to me whether there's recycling out of these materials so we just want to enhance the recycling on a local level and it doesn't pertain to curbside or town refuse but um, mm -hmm. Also, we want to make sure that the same person who picks up their solid waste picks up their recycling so we have some control and rather than having multiple vendors. And having discussed this issue with Arlene Miller and other people at DEP, it seems that, mo that we, we don't know of any <clears throat> private site in Long Meadow that uses two separate vendors, but apparently this does mm -hmm. go on in other parts of the state. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I've seen a lot of it, they have a separate um, dumpster for cardboard. I, you know, I think that that's not going to be the hard part. I think it's going to be the plastic part. And have other towns provided yes. Uh, yes. containers? 
They don't provide the waste disposal company should be providing these containers to okay. their customers. Okay. But uh, this same regulation is sort of a boiler. We took a boilerplate of, yeah. a, of a model regulation which is already in effect in maybe 10 or 15 towns in the Pioneer Valley, and we had, including East Long, East Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't promulgated this type of regulation, so we just wanted to be consistent with other towns in the area. Well, yeah, I think that's very progressive. You know, I think that we, we should have been doing this uh, a long time when we ago. made all the other changes, uh, but I, I think it is um, frustrating, you know, when you when you don't have a place to put cans or bottles, especially, you know. Uh, yeah, Mark. Yeah, definitely, but if I read this correctly, it gives the Board of Health the right to enforce this program in places like Glen Meadow, for example, who has yeah. a private contractor. Yes, it does. And as well as um, the uh, Genesis House. Mm -hmm. okay. Other, th th those would be... Those are the two main... Yeah, private. and the one on... Uh, the other one uh, off of... Uh, Emerson. Emerson mm -hmm. Manor. So those would be your, your um, residential, but their, in a sense, commercial mm -hmm. accounts. And then the all of the other commercial accounts, such as restaurants, store, other types of stores, big Y, you know, all mm -hmm. of those types of businesses. So it extends to both um, the residential commercial customer as well as other what you would think of as commercial customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I'd make a motion that the select board endorse the promulgation of this refuse and recycling regulation by the Board of Health. Second. Okay. Second, okay, any further discussion? Okay, sounds good. All right, for a vote then, go for a vote. Those in favor? All right, on to the bees. Okay. <laughs> I have to say that um, this was very difficult for us and we must have gone, I've gone, I was on draft number 10 by the time we got there. It's definitely a, um, <clears throat> it was a compromise and a, 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 a consensus of all parties. We weren't <clears throat> going to be able to draft a regulation that was going to be 100% approved by people who keep bees. On the other hand, we did feel that it was within the authority of the Board of Health um, to uh, regulate this area that there were some public health considerations, especially for individuals who are allergic to bee stings. Um, so we, we took, in order to do this, we, we took a lot of what were actually um, good practices that beekeepers are already following and codified it in our regulations. So we're taking what beekeepers think are good good practices and making them part of our regulations mm -hmm. and adding several more, a um, couple of more provisions, including um, notification of a butter so that if people beside a beekeeper Oh, have, okay. an, no. you have allergies, they at least want to know about it. And also adding some recommendations about safety issues such as mounting hives securely, um, keeping a certain number of hives per lot as a general rule so that um, you don't have too much of a concentration of beekeeping activities going on in a small lot close to a butter. So it was definitely a compromise between public health and the rights of beekeepers and also recognizing that that bees place it are very important in our in our agricultural mm -hmm. uh, environment and that pollinators are needed. But we couldn't satisfy a hundred percent what the beekeepers originally had proposed to us. On the other hand, we took out a lot of um, provisions that we would have liked to have seen um, to sort of give an, a balance to these regulations. They've been reviewed by uh, town council. Um, Attorney Meehan did not see, you know, had looked, looked over these provisions. 
and um, this was the best we could do at this point in time, um, acknowledging the fact that if things don't work out in the future, um, we could either um, we could amend the regulations up or down uh, to meet any circumstances that might arise. Mm -hmm. But it was our, our best our best chance at compromise. Yeah. That's. Yeah. But I know the beekeepers um, were anxious to get something on the books, and so weren't the people who were in opposition to the beekeepers. The people who really wanted strict regulations um, really wanted us to do to go forward with this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything, Mary Pat? I think Beverly's covered it again. We tried to meet a happy medium, and we felt we did come to agreement. But we, as you spoke before, crowded rooms and full rooms. We had lots of feedback from the beekeepers folks from the state as well as some of the abutters and we felt mm -hmm. we tried to compromise cover okay. both bases as fairly as possible. Yeah, and I, th I think this has been a, a difficult time for beekeepers. I mean, it's not an inexpensive hobby. I mean, you know, you have to build these things, you have to buy all this equipment, you have to import your queen from Sicily, I guess, you know, you have to get all these things going. And then you can lose half the hive. And, and a lot of people have been losing most of the bees every year. We haven't, um, you know, so I think that this is a very reasonable, um, you know, pr you know, uh, pl plan. Uh, you know, I think it, it should work well with our town. Uh, Mark, did you have a comment? Do you want to? Yeah, I, I guess the two questions. One, one was the, the, the size of the hives that are specified here. It says 20 cubic feet, but it's also, if you will, grandfathers in the, anything that's existing prior to this being in, enacted or brought to, made a regulation. Is there any relief for people who are living next to, you know, I, you know, I keep going back to that town meeting where somebody was complaining about what seemed to be much larger than a 20 cubic foot well, hive. Our, our, our concern, there are, are concerns that are beyond the authority of the Board of Health. There's no doubt about it that large hives located on somebody's roof is not, the, to my thinking, but maybe not to a beekeeper, is not the most aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> However, it isn't within the authority of the Board of Health <coughs> to look at aesthetics. Um, you know, and, and, it's, and although we re have recommended that hives need to be secured. Um, we have let the planning board know that you know that might be some area that they might want to follow up as to um, whether these large um, hives are somehow something that the planning board should be regulating as an accessory, something or other under under the the bylaws. So i um, so we did I did speak to um, Mr. Holland. I, I, I've spoken to several members of the planning board about this, mm -hmm. saying that you know we've gotten complaints about aesthetics and about stability. i I am not authorized, nor do I have the training to make a judgment call on whether the hive is mounted in a stable manner. I'm not an structural engineer, I'm going to freely admit that. And I can't comment on the aesthetics. That's not in, within my, our authority. So um, I have definitely brought that to another board, other board's attention, and I've spoken extensively to the building commission <coughs> who, has, who has come out there with me and seen the issue. Um, I think it depends where these hives are located um, and um, whether they're located on roofs or whether they're located on some kind of a post in the ground. Um, you know, there are stability. I feel there may be an issue of stability, but I'm not a structural engineer. Another question I have is the, the, the terms that are in here are colony and hive. The, the, a hive is defined as 20 cubic feet, but a colony isn't defined, nor did I see how many colonies make up a hive, how many hives make up a colony. Maybe I, I missed that, but you know, it says how many colonies you can have 
in a, in a certain residential site. But I, I didn't see how that translates back to the number of hives that you can have or the, the dimensions. And I was just wondering if, if that was an oversight. Um, just, yeah, I think that I should have, I think it should all be related to hives rather than colonies. The, the numbers are colonies, um, are hives per. But it says residential lot size, number of colonies, not number of hives. Right, it should be, it mm -hmm. should read hives. It okay, so be. so is that going to get changed in the yes, final yes. Yes. version? Yes. Okay. No. Well, it, I, I just, it, I, I, yeah. it doesn't really, I mean, they can write whatever they want to, but it was just unclear, so, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we've got the queen, it's and then there's the colony. You, know. so you have two two hives, right. two colonies, two queens, basically. Right. Yeah. So. Yes. I had one quick question. The uh, the the regulations you're proposing is the, the the house under question. Is it in compliance with everything here? Yes. Okay. So including the 200 foot. 200 feet from the street. Mm -hmm. From no. all the property lines? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. No, it is not. None of the, in fact, there are a number of beekeepers in town. Um, and none, there are, there are no hives that I know of in town that could comply with these regulations. That, that was a question I had, mm -hmm. is that the 200 feet in here, it says if you're going to have 12 or more hives. Right, and that would be down. Because 200 feet is... That's, that's a lot. Right. Nobody I know has more than 12 hives. Mm -hmm. But 212 hives would be something that would be almost a commercial operation right. located down in agricultural property. And in fact, a number of the beekeepers have tried to locate their hives down in ag the agricultural lands. And um, they found that pilferage has been a problem or or destruction, you know, vandalism, and that's why they. So then, if you had just anything less than twelve hives, is there a distance you have to be from your property line? No. Mm -hmm. We recommend. You know, there were several recommendations that come from the beekeepers' own guidelines, but to be honest, there wasn't one beekeeper in town that. Would, would be able to meet those guidelines. Mm -hmm. We have, in a sense, um, we have one beekeeper, for example, whose hive is probably 10 or 15 feet from the property line. However, the hives are located 30 feet off of the ground. <laughs> mm. So the the premise is, is that the, the, the flight, <laughs> the flight path <laughs> yeah. is not going to be yeah. 15 feet. You know, 15 yeah. feet, that <laughs> the bees are going to be flying up. They're not going to be, they're going to be aiming for mm -hmm. that hive. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a question of the number of feet from your butter. It's a question of whether the hive is high or low. So I'd be more concerned if you had a hive sticking out of a post, mm -hmm. maybe two or three feet off of the ground, that was only two feet, ten feet from an abutter, than I would a hive that is located on a roof. Right. So like airports, you have to look at flight patterns, trying to figure out. It was, <laughs> it was an education. <laughs> so, so Beverly, what I, what I see here is we're essentially limiting, the proposal would essentially limit beekeepers to 200 to 12 hives 20 cubic feet each which is 240 cubic feet so if I do the math right it's like six by eight by five feet kind of thing and that would be the limit for primarily residential beekeepers that's right okay. mm -hmm. in in the residential zone mm -hmm. anything more you'd have to go down to agricultural property and, and that was chosen based on just the compromise you went through uh, no, it was actually taken directly out of the beekeeping guidelines. They are voluntary guidelines of the Mass Beekeepers Association. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I, before we vote on it, I still would like to say, you know, I, I appreciate you putting all this effort into this 
project. I know that you know we had at least one individual who was very upset about you know the B situation, and um, he had come to a meeting recently, you know, a couple months back now, um, you know, hoping that something would be developed. And so, you know, I appreciate you putting this effort in, and this would affect future beekeepers more than current beekeepers. I have to say each. The, the <coughs> The, um, each side of this particular regulation afforded themselves of the opportunity to come to numerous meetings of the Board of Health mm -hmm. to provide me with their pro proposals, and they have received a copy of the, they've already received a copy of these draft regulations because we've been in, in really close contact with them. We also worked with an apiary specialist, a, a Dr. Kim Skirm from the Mass Department of um, Agricultural Resources, who is the state beekeeping guru, and um, she assisted us in sort of uh, verifying what the situations were on the ground and, and giving some, us some guidance as to understand beekeeping in general, which I have to say was a new one on us, mm -hmm. and um, also the role of the state in the regulatory process because they do um, they do have a registration process on the state level for um, people who keep bees and they are subject to inspections once a year. So mm -hmm. it's a whole process. So I appreciate your, your efforts at trying to resolve a conflict in the community. Yeah. Yes. Ready for a motion? Yes, I am. I'd like to make a motion that we endorse the Board of Health's uh, regulation on, on, on beekeeping in, in the town of Longmeadow, just with the making sure we have the change in the density Colony. standards from colonies to hives. Okay. Second. Seconded. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Great. Well, thank you for coming. Can I? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to ask one question. Bev. Uh, yeah. It's not related to this, so I don't know if you want to mm -hmm. finish up. If you were going to go, if you were going to say something else. I actually have something for um, the members, <laughs> the select board. Um, if you had any question as to how we come up with <laughs> regulations in three separate fields. <laughs> Altogether, I actually have a um, a new poster by the Mass Health Officers Association to give some sense of the the breadth of um, of the area of authority of the Board of Health because you certainly need to be somebody who likes to have lifelong learning because the areas of authority is just, it's just such a wide spectrum. So I'm going to, I'll give that to you and leave it, give it to Paul. I was just going to ask, in Stephen's town manager report, he reports that there's a $7,500 grant right. for the Medical Reserve Corps. I just wonder briefly you could okay. describe Actually, to the board what grants. that does and, and then uh, what the grant will be used for. Okay, the $7,500 mm -hmm. grant is a federal grant from, um, the CDC for the Medical Reserve Corps, which is a group of volunteers in our town, some with medical training and some that are general volunteers. And they, have, they are trained to assist the town if we have an emergency situation, such as a weather emergency or some power outage or something like that. They, they have been trained and um, to, uh, they help us out with immunizations. They do, they assist our town nurse. And they would work in shelters or uh, emergency distribution sites of vaccine or serum, whatever we needed to have done. Um, so they're a core of volunteers and we have about 96 currently on the rolls. The purpose of this grant um, is twofold. One, to energize this group of volunteers and also to provide some money for our local emergency management team. And what we'd like to do is have a tabletop and a full-scale drill of, um, of our town sheltering facilities. So both our volunteers and any uh, town department 
that might be involved with sheltering, and that could include DPW, police, um, Park and Rec, who might be assisting on that. So we'd, they'd actually mm -hmm. get a review um, and some practical uh, training in setting up a, a, a shelter in this town. We have not had um, a shelter that we have manned um, individually. The last time we had a shelter, the Red Cross was able to provide the overnight staff for us, um, although we do have cots and other sheltering equipment. But in the event of a widespread, an area-wide um, emergency, there is no guarantee that the Red Cross would be able to help us out. So we need to have volunteers and our own staff ready to do this task um, mm -hmm. if it should be necessary. Now, uh, people who are much older than me probably remember when there were bomb shelters, and, and in those they had food and everything in case people had to stay underground for a while. But uh, it would we have anything? Do we do anything like that? We I'll tell you what we did. We <laughs> would do. First of all, we do have yeah. the cots Cons. and the pillows. <laughs> and to be very honest, we yeah. would commandeer any food that's at Long Meadow High School yeah. because okay. Long Meadow High School is our emergency sheltering site. Uh, okay. And uh, anything that would, was in, would be on inventory that day, we would have to, with Paul's assistance and his good bookkeeping staff, Mm -hmm. um, account for any supplies that we would have to commandeer. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it would be people going, if the big Y or, or Martyrs was still open, just take out our credit cards and buy whatever <coughs> was necessary mm -hmm. to keep people, you know, there that don't have a home to go to mm -hmm. uh, for however many days this would take until either the feds or the state government could come in with supplies. So okay. So the best place yeah. to run to would be the school, because this is where the this, food is the probably. The Long Meadow High School <laughs> is our designated yeah. uh, shelter, mm -hmm. and we do have cots uh, right there already. There's a closet that was built at the new Long Meadow High School to keep our sheltering supplies, charging mm -hmm. stations for phones, etc. So mm -hmm. the the grant is uh, to provide a professional to come in and run these two drills. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, are looking at the future um, and with the thought that at some point it might be interesting, if not required, to thinking, think about sharing public health services with neighboring communities. It's sort of a, a regionalization effort. I have no idea how well this is going to work out. I have no idea with whom we're go we might merge. And I don't know the extent of the sharing of, of public health services. It is not necessarily going to mean a drastic reduction in public health service costs for this town. But it might be much more efficient and position ourselves to get grants which we are currently not able to apply for because of the small population size mm -hmm. of Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. So um, we have just received a $25,000 state grant that is going to, was actually given to Pioneer Valley Planning Commission who will be providing um, services to us through one of their planners and with the assistance of a UMass uh, graduate student to explore what kind of public health services we are currently providing, what our neighboring community of East Long Meadow is currently providing or not providing, and the feasibility of, at some point in the future, um, having some kind of merging or sharing of public health services. I don't know whether it would be a total district or regional region or whether it would be partial but um, I think it's something that we should be looking at especially as um, I think it's no secret to say that I'm not going to be working here another 10 years mm -hmm. and so um, I think it's um, sort of a, a good succession it's, it's good succession planning for our town but also in light of um, a lot of um, 
pressure that may be brought by the state to make sure that we have an accredited health department. It's something that we really should take a look at and, and go about this in a slow and deliberate manner rather than just be forced into it in a matter of uh, six or nine months. I think we it, to be proactive and getting an idea. La Meadow may or may not be the best partner. We'd have to look at it, but this mm -hmm. is going on in other parts of the state, and we we should just start the exploration process um, mm -hmm. and, and now, no, without any obligation to do anything for next fiscal mm -hmm. year, or maybe even the next. I don't know. So when you look at some of the grants that we might be eligible for if we had a larger uh, catchment area, so to speak, uh, is there a magic number that, you know? They're all different. They're all different, yeah. Uh, a lot of them are talking uh, a catchment number of 50,000. 50. Some are talking 25,000, which would work out well yeah. for as East Long Meadow. Um, there are other factors that play into some of these grants. If you can bring in a few rural communities, you get some brownie points there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I did oh. uh, put out a little bit of a feeler to Wilbraham and Hamden. And that mm -hmm. didn't get back any response there, but um, they they have a very different setup than Long Meadow and East Long Meadow that are more more similar than Wilbraham and Hamden. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's something that also maybe after we've collected all the data and have a plan in mind, maybe um, Wilbraham and Hamden may be more interested. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just hard to know. But I think if you go about it slowly and give people a chance to really understand the process, you might be able to bring in other players. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Mark, yeah. I know you are always looking for efficiencies. So. <laughs> 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 uh, I just want to get that one hand out. Okay. And I think that's. Okay. Uh, well, well, thank so you for coming. I appreciate you. all your hard work. Okay, I hope I will, will, you will make that amendment. Yeah, I thanks. hope one of the beekeepers in our town would give you at least some honey for your all your hard work. <laughs> yeah. There's a payoff. <laughs> okay. So. Um, as we, you know, we've done the appointment, uh, the Minister of Board Health, I guess we'll go to, um, should we go to the DPW, DPW updates absolutely. next? Uh, Mr. Carr is here, and uh, Mr. Mario. Maybe just uh, introduce yourselves to the viewers. Uh, sure, I'm gonna ask you to take one and pass Diana back Oh, for Marie? Yes. Uh, Paul, can you <coughs> get a, a, make a pile for Marie? Yeah, the, I have. The I can take oh. this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, some of these look familiar. The resurfacing plan and the uh, fiscal year projects from the engineering department we received in our packet. Yes. So, as Tom mentioned, uh, first, Mario Mazza, DPW director. Andy Carrar, um, town engineer. And in your packet, um, two of the handouts uh, were provided which is the uh, FY18 um, capital list, and we're happy to go through that to 
any degree that you want. If you want to isolate the ones that are still in progress or if you want to talk about some of the ones that are completed. And then also there was some other information that was passed out, a uh, five-year plan of uh, future paving projects. I think there's also some proposed sidewalk work that's going to be done and maybe some other information regarding um, some projects. future projects that we may uh, try to pursue in the next five years or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yes, Mark, questions? I, I, I don't know. Are we talking about the five-year surfacing plan? Is that sure. a good place to start? So sure. I guess the question is, after this winter, or, which isn't, isn't over yet, the freeze-thaw cycles, you know, how flexible, how, you know, how fluid is this still? And, and, and can you just tell us about the process of updating it and people who want to make suggestions on, how, on, on updating it with their roads? Because it, it gets this more, gets a lot of interest from yeah, people. Let, let me, let me talk what year is my yeah. street going to get there? Yeah, sure. Um, so yes, it, it is fluid and it gets more fluid as you project out into future years. Right. Um, the roads that we decide to pave are typically and primarily um, uh, because of how they were rated, uh, primarily how they were rated uh, during our in-house, uh, in, back in 2016, we did a roadway inventory and that was conducted by um, one of our engineering aides who happened to be, um, uh, I would almost call him an expert at what he did because that's what he did for a job previous to working in Log Meadow. Um, so I have some confidence in that um, pavement evaluation, but it always changes um, as we go out and visit these streets. But um, Anthony, if I could just interrupt for a yeah. second. So is it, is it fair to say that, you know, there's, it's, it's pretty likely that 2019, what shows here is 2019, is going to get done in 2019, and 2020 is... You know, I mean, it's fair to say 80% of sure. it and then there 70 or, yeah. or, you know, is, are there some kind of numbers like that you can kind of throw or at, at us? Or, I, I don't or, mind throwing the numbers out. and <laughs> Just don't, don't write them down. <laughs> and don't write it down. I will comply and say, you know, when you say 80%, that sounds fairly reasonable. And if you want to drop it to 60 for the next year um, for various reasons, I would say that we're fairly confident in this coming year. Okay. Uh, there are a few uh, factors that will likely adjust that list and what will happen is the, the roads that we plan to pave in fiscal year 2019 if they have to get bumped they will get bumped one year at a time right. we do have issues with the gas company um, we, we have to coordinate with them um, because they're always um, they always have to do their work um, and it's very difficult when I can't give them a guaranteed list three years in advance, and you know, and then they have to pl do their planning uh, based on that. So, unfortunately, it comes to um, almost that year or a year in advance where we say, you know what, we, we definitely want to pave these roads, and then they come back and tell us they have some work to do. So, adjustments are made. Um, so when you say uh, some certainty, so you know, so, so if somebody, a, a citizen, was to write you and say, my street's absolutely this is because I get these letters. My street's absolutely terrible. It's full of da, 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 da. When's it scheduled to be paved? And you looked at this and you say, you know, well, gee, it's in blue. So your response would be, it's currently scheduled for 2021, but or you don't respond at all. I always respond. Yeah. No, no, but you don't respond with the and year. And I always call back. Um, no, but but do you give them the year? Do you give them a 2021 We try not to. I can't you just say, yeah. it's not in the current year. Well, I I get the calls all the time. Okay. And, and, I, and I've and answered a few myself. And, and, how, and generally speaking, if I know the year, I say it's scheduled for that year. And I try to give them the same... Uh, information that roads fall apart at different times and sometimes you know depending on budgets you know funding levels those get adjusted and then sometimes different priorities take um, take over and then what's projected doesn't happen and so I try to give them that background so that way there's no guarantee that just because we had this conversation that it may happen sooner it may happen later I, I, I want to okay. make sure that right. they I'm leave the conversation to get a understanding story from everybody in this it, room is your we story, all get questions or, yeah, or I, is your uh, yeah. comments yeah I don't similar I don't want to I deliberately do not want to be elusive um, 
but I will tell them about 95 percent of the time I agree with them that their road is in really bad shape and um, and I and I I tell them that in all likelihood it's going to get done fairly soon but no guarantees mm -hmm. okay it's tough to guarantee. No, I, yeah. I understand yeah. that. I'm just trying to make sure it's, it's a diplomatic because uh, we get all we get yeah. emails too from people saying when's yeah. my road going to get done. Thank you. So, so I think our presentation tonight is going to be uh, divided into two categories. I think Mario is going to talk about to whatever point you want to talk about um, non-infrastructure capital projects, and then the infrastructure stuff. I think. And he's going to handle so. I didn't know if you wanted me to run through some of the projects we'll work on or if you had specific questions that you wanted to ask. I'm not exactly sure how you wanted to go about this. I had a question. See, now the majority of roads that are shown on this resurfacing um, are not main arteries, like they're not William Street or Long Meadow Street. And so that's those usually come under a different approach or no? Same approach. I would say we've had the good fortune of redoing many of our main roads in recent years. Mm -hmm. uh, I can think of two that I, I, I think are nearing the top of that list that need to get done. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, obviously Converse Street was done last year. Um, yeah. Parts of well, Maple's been done Maple were done a yeah. few years before both of us got here. And I, I think there's a couple other parts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was was done. So, well, yeah. so, um, okay. so that's why, okay. Frank Smith, right, is another. Great. Mario, is it possible for you to provide this in electronic version to us? Sure. As a file, I don't know if you send it to Paul or Stephen and yeah. Debbie. Yep. She'll get it to us. Absolutely. Thanks. In fact, any of this stuff. I mean, we've got the maps. Those were great. But yep. The list is even better. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Are we going to let them give their presentation first? Instead of us just. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess what I had in mind was kind of running through the projects that are completed that are on your map. Um, our FY18 paving um, was completed. Our sidewalks were completed. Our sidewalks came in under budget. And so much uh, <coughs> like last year, we are drafting a phase two that we are going to have um, released uh, probably in the next month or so and then um, a construction of probably April or May uh, for the, the next segment of sidewalk. Um, this year, we, um, we got the spot repair for sidewalk off the ground, very successful. Um, crack sealing, as many of you have probably driven up and down Bliss Road and some of the others, you can see all the, the squiggly lines, that's, that's the crack seal that, that was done this year. Um, boilers at uh, Blueberry School and Center School, uh, are completed. The fire suppression updates uh, at Blue Bear and Wolf Swamp schools are completed. Uh, there was a playscape that, um, a preschool playscape that went in at Wolf Swamp. That actually happened before school opened in the fall. And um, at Bliss Park, uh, a group of uh, citizens got some money for a guardrail and a sign project, and that was completed too in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, the projects that are still in process, the our annual guardrail money. Um, we are eyeing a uh, a project that is on uh, the east side of Long Meadow Street, um, and a couple other small segments. The, f the specs on that are almost done, and I would say that's probably going out to bid in March or April. And again, construction sometime late spring, early summer. We have two water main um, that are out to bid currently. One's on Chandler Ave, one's on Crest. Um, One sorry. question, what size water mains? Um, eight. They are eight. I think they replaced fours. They're replacing fours? Yes. Okay. Um, we have a treatment plant uh, demo. Uh, that spec is completed. That's going to go out to bid in March. Uh, fire alarm panel at Center School. Uh, we have a vendor uh, that's pre-approved on the state list. That work is scheduled for school break in April. Community House Retaining Wall, uh, the contract has been awarded, and they actually tried to start doing the work in the fall. Um, winter came on too quickly, and so that project is going to start in the spring. The uh, Stores Library Window Project, uh, the specs 
uh, wrapping up now. That should be out to bid in April. Uh, we have uh, Turner Field dugouts. Um, that is a spring project. Um, we are doing that internally. Wolf Swamp Field uh, well. Uh, we are finishing the specs on that. That should be out to bid in April. Blueberry School Youth Soccer Field. We are currently working with a vendor who's going to do survey and design, so that one's a little further out. Uh, Greenwood Pool, which is probably, other than um, the Avondale Project, been the bane of my existence, my time in Long Meadow. We are working with uh, Diamond Pool Company, and they're helping us um, test the lines and try to come up with a game plan to figure out exactly where our weaknesses are and how to fix them with hopes that um, we're going to be on time for this year's opening. Um, the new DPW project, which has got plenty of publicity uh, over the last year, that is out to bid. That closes at the end of March. And the last one I wanted to bring up, and the town manager uh, kind of wanted to give, ask us to give you a little update on the project and start a conversation about cost. Uh, I don't suspect that you guys will answer this question or, or even land on uh, you know, a direction, but um, wanted to at least give you the update. So the Dwight Road corridor, the diff that you guys have talked about mm -hmm. so much, 2.5 million was um, approved at Maytown meeting. The um, specs were recently uh, completed and a cost estimate that went with that was 2.7, so that's 200,000 more than what was approved at town meeting. So the, the options, I guess, uh, we're going to bid it either way and, and get the real cost, but the options that uh, the town manager wanted to kind of lay out today and then uh, if you guys decide, have discussion about it. If not, I'm sure it'll come up at a future meeting, but do we want to, A, um, add resources to it if it comes in over 2.5 using Chapter 90 funds or others, um, or B, um, dial back the scope to meet the 2.5 and I don't know exactly what that will look like. It will depend on how much over it is and, and what we can strip out of the project. So, well, Mario, so is there some parts of that that we could actually do like sidewalks? I mean, is there... We can know? do the sidewalk portion of that um, as part of our annual sidewalk project. But it may mean that no other sidewalks in town get done that year. So that's a possibility. Okay, and, and something like that, could could that make the difference in the price? It could. Mm -hmm. I guess more importantly, is there anything on there that can be deferred? And I, and I don't mean never done, but not done for three, four, or five, five years. I, I mean, think, go ahead. I'll just try to yeah. explain what, you know, what happened. I think the main driver in the cost, uh, projected cost increase was... Uh, our, uh, I think it's our kind of our new standard with the traffic uh, control equipment being the, the decorative black mast arms. Uh, that kind of increased the cost, um, I believe, on the order of a hundred, maybe a hundred thousand, hundred thousand um, dollars, maybe something mm -hmm. like that. Um, the plans are done, and. As soon as their consultant, Fuss and O'Neill, provides me with the, um, the some of their specifications, I'll be preparing the bid. Uh, the bid will uh, consist of a base bid, which will be the majority of the work, all the work. And we will be adding to the project as bid alternates, as bid alternates, um, a few desired sidewalk um, segments that we'd like to see uh, extrapolated from the project and that would be a sidewalk on the north side of Williams um, from Dwight heading to the west to the nearest intersection which I think is Churchill. Okay. That would be a nice uh, gap to fill. That's going to be a bid alternate. Another bid alternate will be a sidewalk on the south side of Williams, a very short segment to the nearest intersection, 300 feet or, or so, uh, relatively small. Um, and another bid alternate was some additional sidewalk on the north side of Converse in front of the office building. Um, by the way, those bid alternate costs are not reflected into the $2.7 okay. million. Dollars. Okay. So uh, again, these are extra. Um, 
maybe the bids will be um, so low that we can actually add these bid alternates. You know, wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. But as far as um, the project being $2.7 million, it's an estimate, um, and we're just going to have to find out what you know, the actual uh, bid prices are. And I also believe they, in, I think they include contingencies. Tom? Yes, oh, Richard. You through your presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, originally, I would ask Stephen for you guys to come in and tell us how many roads we have that are eligible for TIP program in town. And to talk about that program specifically and where we're sitting, what we've got specs designed for, what's the next one up, what's the needs for money. You prepared to discuss that? Um, I think I, I can speak of uh, the TIP. Um, so for years we had um, um, a project on the TIP that has been uh, bumped into future years. It's been happening for uh, for a little while now, and that was the uh, Route 5 project, so-called South Project, which is from the Enfield Town Line north to Converse Street. Mm -hmm. We have, there was a decision made to um, advance uh, what we call the Converse L Project, and that is a continuation of Converse Street from where we left off last year west to Route 5 and then north to the Springfield line. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of taken that um, and made that a priority to replace this Route 5 project because we didn't really have much advancement as far as design was concerned on that Route 5 project. Not a whole lot happened there. Now all your designs already finished on that other one, isn't it? No. Is not that at all. Um, the, when you're when you say the other one, do you mean this on the Converse, Converse. L? The Converse L? Yeah. The, the uh, design has just begun, and we expect that a 25% uh, submission. And it just actually just started. Uh, we engaged Fuss and O'Neill, um, the design consultant, back in early January, to to design this project. Is that going to be do? Is that going to be combined with the other project that was being developed? No. For the widening of the intersections and the same project, forced. and I think um, I mean, we 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 we've we've switched. Told there was vendors. a lot of design work already completed on it, and that. I believe we provided that to the new vendor. Am I wrong? Yes, yes. So, I, yes. Okay. So now I think I know what you're what you're saying. Um, there was preliminary design work uh, performed, and a report um, made by VHB engineers mm -hmm. back in 2000, I think it was like 2010, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little later than that. Uh, it was a preliminary design, it was a concept design, um, and they did a traffic study, and they Some suggested survey. that we you know, add lanes to Forest Glen, Converse Street. That was uh, recently provided to our uh, current consultant Fuss and O'Neill, so they are using it. So, so you're going for actual design now? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No longer conceptual. All the conceptual right. is done. We're going to. We want to uh, advance this to construction documents, and at the same time, we have to advocate our project. Um, you know, with the state at JTC right. meetings, the MPO. Right. Um, is, has this one been introduced on this year's list? Um, it, it is not on the list, but this project certainly has been uh, introduced. Uh, this morning, uh, we went to the TIP subcommittee meeting mm -hmm. where they score the, these projects. So towns uh, appear before this board and they discuss the project and each of these projects gets scored. Right. Um, transportation Evaluation Criteria, TEC score. Um, so I prepared that submittal. Uh, they reviewed it today, and we've come to find out that our score is going to be highly competitive um, at about 55 points. Points. Um, Speak English. What's that mean? <laughs> uh, that means it's it's a it's a worthy project. What what does that really mean? What a that worthy really project to be funded within how many years? That I cannot tell you. That is what we don't know. 
worthy project and one that's going to be in the top 10 that's put before them every year? Uh, it depends on, um, number one, yes, how important the project is, the, tech, the TEC score, mm -hmm. uh, how long the project has been um, around, uh, how long the project has been around. You know, it was introduced to, uh, you know, five years ago, ten years ago. It all depends on that. Uh, some of it depends on that. Um, what and else? Is, is it depends the, on cost. Is that the only TIP project that we act, actually have active at this point? It's active. Okay. That's right. What What is the next one in the job jar? The next one that we want to um, get done is the Route 5 South project, and that would be um, one that we, we had. Um, and that would be the repaving of Longmeadow Street from the Enfield Town Line to Converse Street. Yeah, do you have that would be our plan to advance that after the Converse L. In fact, I'll, we'd like to introduce it as, you know, or reintroduce it as soon as we can. Is there going to be any re design changes on that, or is that just repaving? Uh, there's definitely going to, that's going to be a full blown design. Um, okay. In fact, last summer, I solicited um, design uh, services for that project, mm -hmm. and the the numbers that came back to me. I solicited three uh, major firms, and that we're talking about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to five hundred and fifty thousand dollars to um, you know design the project. Okay, so which, that would wipe out an entire year's allotment of our chapter ninety, then what, or half of it anyway, wouldn't it? Uh, if that's where the funds would come right. from, yes. Okay. So, yeah. they, so you've estimated costs about half a million right now. Yeah. And you're looking at, when are you looking at letting the design contract? It depends on... Not for a while, I think, is the, yeah. the short answer. <clears throat> uh, you know, I think most of our uh, effort is being put into the Long Meadow L. And okay, but that, that's already gone. Well, it's, it, it, it's gone in a way that it's, you know... It's it's you know being actively designed. Right. Um, I don't know that we have any commitment from the state on a fiscal year 19 or 20. So if we're lucky, maybe 2021 for that mm -hmm. project, and then you know I would say it would be sometime after um, sometime after that where we would start building the Route 5 South project. Okay, but your design is not going to run. You have. There's not going to be provisions where it'll run stale. I mean, it, your design is going to stay, I would assume. Just like the, the L, I mean, sure. once you design yep. it, it's going to be there. There's, the site conditions sure. aren't going to vary. Oh, we can get that, that, that. It would be nice to get, you know, this, this project designed, the Route 5 South <coughs> project, get, get it going. Right. So um, um, what I, we've I tried to do that. is um, put some money away. I don't know if it's Chapter 90 money that you've, stockpiled or if it's general fund money to fund the design work for these projects it's hard to kind of do that knowing that you know we're looking five plus years out when that money's sitting in a bank or it'll end up going into a document that'll go onto a shelf versus putting the money into roads and, and getting them resurfaced sooner than later so we've had that conversation internally and with the town manager and I think in the short term, short term, we are looking to do more road work. Um, but he certainly understands the need to have some money put aside, and and so maybe let, next year, or the year after, we'll yeah, get back me, to let that. Let me share my concerns with you. Okay. If we don't get the design work, it'll never be approved as a tip project. We know that 100% factual. And five or six, seven, eight years ago when we started down this path, we made a commitment to try to keep something actively going into TIP and to never go back and start to back up to where we're sliding funds over here. It's take every wagon slowly forward instead of having one shoot ahead. Because you you're not, can't get the whole town completed anyway. We know that. Yeah. But if you... I don't want the mentality to sink in that we can only have one project going at a time because, to me, the more projects you've got up demonstrates stronger and stronger how the needs are of our community and how the, when they let the traffic off Interstate 91 right up through the middle of our town, what it's doing to our road systems. So I, that's my feeling. Point well taken. Yeah. I, I guess my concern, um, 
and, and somewhat oppositional to that is that we did that with Converse Street to mm -hmm. some degree, and the regulations changed. You know, Complete Streets came on board, and mm -hmm. we had to redo that work. I get a little, I guess I have, uh, you know, some some bad uh, thoughts on how that money was spent and then respent because you know you had to bring the design up to mm -hmm. up to the new standard. So I get a little weary of doing the work. Let it sit on the shelf for. X years, regulations change, and then spending the money again. So I, I see your way. And, but and you I, had to do the design work to get that TIP project approved to yeah. start with. So you can't hold off. It has to be done. I will tell you, I, I go to these meetings, yeah. and you're right. What happens is many towns have these um, approved TIP projects. They're programmed for a certain year, and for some reason, uh, they're not ready. Right. In you know, two years before their project is supposed to go, when their design should be done, for some reason a lot of these towns are not advancing their designs. And what happens is they get those projects get dropped. Well not dropped, dropped or bumped. Right. And projects um, such as this Converse L project, hopefully, can get in there. So I I like what you're saying there. Well, that's what I've said all along. That, that'll be, I, I, don't, I don't change this for the, for the day of the week. <laughs> it's the same presentation every day. And that's the reason I've been, I guess when I first got here, I banked, I started banking some money away right. for the, the design of this. And unfortunately, I think at this point, we're, um, we're contemplating whether or not to, to use it for other uh, things. I, I think this is when the presentation with you and the and the town manager comes to the select board okay and says here's what we need money for I, I don't think you know I think before people sat and worried in in their own little booth and they shouldn't be worrying in their own booth you know you could you should be coming forward with what the town needs and letting everybody know this is how much money we need and going full bore because without that we don't know that you may have a, a drastic need until it blows up and then we're all embarrassed and this is i mean i, I would this this is to me i think for the town this is an important project to get this route five done right now you're doing some eight inch water lines this year and you just said you're replacing four inch water lines right and if we hadn't started beating the drum i guess mr gold even started when he was on capitol it wouldn't have been done because it's not glitzy work no, I, I agree with you. I see I see where you come from. But we still got a lot of four inch lines, don't we? Uh, we sure do. Yeah. So I'm glad to see you're you're getting some. That was the next question. Are you getting them? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll get off. I'll get off that. I got a question. Can I? Yeah, sure. Question? Please. We still got the floor. I looked down through here. I didn't see anything that says how much side how much money we're spent on sidewalks. I know we, we've allocated four hundred thousand a year. So I have a sidewalk sheet. It is, but I don't. I didn't see it. Maybe I missed it. Yeah. I, I got a copy of one hundred. So oh, preliminary sidewalk plan. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I stand Some corrected. of the money was, might have. There might have been a little money left over from. I, sometimes I, I mix and mix fiscal years with actual years, but. Right. I believe what's stated here is correct. Fiscal year 18 included the stuff that's shown on the top box right roseland terrace um is out to bid <coughs> right now okay. that was the phase two yeah. i mentioned earlier yeah and then next fiscal year or this summer um i think it would be uh, a good plan to follow what i have proposed um, in box number two Okay. The other question I had, I know she got a lot of 2018 sidewalks up on Converse, but that is from the other funding source. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That is from the TIP That's project. from the TIP? Yes. Okay. And all the other ones that you've laid, laid out right here are what we've got going on here? Yes. What was the, uh, uh, the $216,000 there? to the Wimbledon, uh, oh, Avondale, okay, excuse me. New sidewalks. I, I thought you had a design construction firm name there, but yep. I see it's a different streets. It was by CA Construction. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll let up the table for a minute. <laughs> okay, Mark. Yes. I, I'm going to take this a kind of a different direction, I, I guess, and because I go back many, many years 
when I first got on the select board, there was a proposal to do some tip-based improvements to some roads in town. And the discussion at that point among the select board was, well, if you take the state's money, you do it the state's way and to the state standards. And soon, sooner or later, eventually, your rural town becomes a city. Uh, and I, I guess the question is, and, and actually the, the select board at that time voted not to accept tip money for, for, for the project because they didn't want granite curbs throughout the town. And so I guess the question is, does any of that thinking of what, what do these roads look like when we're done with them go into any of this design work that we're doing now on what you call the Converse Street L or, or Long Middle Street South, which I, you know, I mean, Long Middle Street's Route 5, it's a major thoroughfare, there's a lot going on there. I don't think a whole lot of people are, you know, it, it's, it's not going to change what it looks like a whole lot, as opposed to, you know, when I saw the, I think it was the VHB initial design of the, what I'll call Forest Glen Western Avenue mm -hmm. Route 5 intersection, I mean, that very frankly looked like it was the middle of Route 5 in West Springfield. Very different from the the look of what it looks like entering the town of Longmeadow with mm -hmm. huge masts and multiple lights. And, and who, who brings that thinking of, you know, the Longmeadow design into this and and how do we get that in there if it's not part of what Fuss and O'Neill or whoever it is is going to do? The uh, I'm trying to trying to get to, to the gist of your question. Just the question: How do we keep Long Meadow Long Meadow so and not turn it into not are, turn it into you're, Boston you're, Road? You're usually going to find the tip projects are going to be regionally important roadways. Right. So. <laughs> We're obviously not going to do a tip project on the side road. They're going to be the main roads, Long Meadow Street, Converse Street, and maybe, uh, hopefully someday, perhaps uh, Shaker Road. Uh, that's another um, project that I'm thinking about only at this point. The cri there is a criteria uh, that the Mass DOT uh, has for these, these roads, um, um, bike lanes. Um, the designs have to conform to some of their sidewalk standards. They also require you to, uh, if, if you're going to be in an intersection, to uh, design that intersection such that there is a, a, a good improvement with um, traffic flow level of service. So that's probably why you saw all those additional lanes on Forest Glen and maybe the widening of the west side of Converse Street. Um, but I guess, Andy, the, the yeah, question still get, is, yeah, to get how do you keep your, Long Meadow, Long Meadow, and not Boston Road? It, and and, and is the answer, the right, if the answer is don't take money from the state, should that not be a decision? Don't, don't say that, Mark. Well, but, <laughs> Come but on. There may be intersections, there may be sections, Richard, where we don't he, want it to be Boston Road. And the back, question is, whose decision does that Well, go that back become? to what he said. We're just talking about the main arteries in our community. So don't, don't make it sound like it's all the little Captain Roads and Avondales, because it's not. It's just the main, main arteries. And but but, but that's entering you, Long Meadow from Forest Glen, you know, from, from Forest Park or, you know, off of mm -hmm. 5, you know, uh, all I'm doing, Richard, is asking the question of, does it ever get considered? Yes. And should it get considered? And how does it get considered? And those are the, the so, three questions, as opposed to, hey, Fuss and O'Neill, it doesn't matter whether you're doing this in the middle of the city of Boston or Boston Road in Springfield or Forest Glen Drive in Longmeadow, it's the same design, when in fact it ought not be. Right. And that's, that'd be my argument. And it may, you know, that, and that's the question. How do we instill that into these folks? we hire to do this, this, these designs? Well, I can tell you that to a certain degree, and I, I'm going to focus a little bit on traffic signals. And Andy mentioned it earlier in his presentation that, you know, the Dwight Road um, corridor <coughs> project um, is probably um, at 2.7 because of the design we told them that they had to use for the signals, i.e., the same decorative poles that are at Dickinson. And so I think the town, at one of our previous meetings, when we presented on... Uh, Converse Street accepted that as our new standard. Now, should that be uh, duplicated everywhere else in town? That that not is not 
a decision, I think, that happens at the DPW. I think it happens with the town manager and, and at this level. The best we can do is present the facts to you, the costs, and then at some point there's a discussion and a decision made on, on how to move forward. But is there ever discussion about, well, you can have double hanging lights from poles or you can have something else where it's, this is the state standard and here's all you can do. I mean, or, you know, it, I, I really believe that there are people in town, I may be, I'm one of them in some locations, who say, you know, it, I don't want Boston Road running down the middle of, roof, you know, Route 5 turning into Boston Road. You're not the only person it, I've it heard It is that when 91 is shut down, Mark. <laughs> and it is it's, most days in rush hour. Do you ever get on? I, I do. Do you Richard, ever get I, on loud? But, but, I can't but, believe but you're But it's what there. it looks like on a Sunday morning, I guess, is what, you know, not what it looks like. Okay. If, you know, the other night. I'm still near stroke when you're saying you turned down tip money at this town. I, it, it's shocking. Oh, yeah, we turned That's, down tip money. At this point, let's take Converse Ella as an example. At this point, I guess I can't say for certain what the lane arrangements are going to look like. For example, um, at Forest Glen and Converse and perhaps at Laurel, I don't know for 100% certainty. And we're, we would never be able to know that before we start diving into a project, devoting funds for a design effort until the design is underway. So. We're probably likely going to find out fairly soon from Fuss and O'Neill what the what it's going to look like. You know uh, what what it, what what will be accepted, what should be proposed, and then only at that point, after we've devoted a lot of, you know a lot of effort and, and, and funding to the project, would we know for sure what the project would likely uh, look like. So at that point, I guess we could. Call it quits. No, but, but let me wouldn't jump it be in. better to set yeah. set some expectations and standards for them so that they well, only do the design once? That says, look, we want this to to look. Yes, well, we know there's going to be a bicycle lane, and yes, we know there's going to be. We, we do curve. review the design. Yeah, yeah. It, and going no into it, we it. do give them some uh, parameters. We do try to keep the integrity of you know what yeah. you're talking about yeah. okay. in place. Although when you design certain roads for tip, as we've mentioned previously. Um, they have to meet certain standards, and so I think their ultimate um, mode of, or directive is that you know it has to pass the state's tests, and if it doesn't, then we have to, as a group, decide that we're going to fund it internally. So if I could jump into where Andy left off, after that design's done, a lot like what happened, I think it happened maybe before you got here. VHB came in and presented to you guys what the concepts look like. And we had a, a lengthy discussion on traffic signal mm -hmm. at that meeting. I think at that point we decide either we're moving forward with the design they have and go after tip money, or we want it designed our way, our way, and then we decide to fund it internally. We were discussing the decorative poles and they right. had some you know, element to them that other, other town had. Well, but, but, I mean, I, I'm going to go way out on a limb here, but every morning I go down Forest Glen Road, turn right, it's a mess four days a week. Yep. Okay, this week is great, it's vacation week. You know, and I said to myself, gee, you know, if it was two lanes and all, all that kind of stuff. But, you know what, it would significantly change that area of the town. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, it's literally 15 to maybe 30 minutes in the morning and 15 to 30 minutes in the afternoon, and maybe we're willing to put up with that rather than change the character of the town for the other 23 hours of the day. You know, now, mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's my decision. In fact, I know it's not my decision, but I figure if I have input like that, others may also. Sure. And my question still remains of how do we get that input? I gotta tell you, I'm sitting there, you know, muttering under my breath every morning when it's taken me literally 20 minutes to get from Laurel Street down to Route 5, down down Forest Glen, mm -hmm. but, I, but it's only 20 minutes in the morning, and I get it at, at, at the rush hour, you know? Mm -hmm. But we may not want to do that, and, and that's the question I think you ought to be aware that some people want to want to have input to, and I don't know who that, mm -hmm. the right people are, but to come back and say to the town of fait accompli, we talked to, to Fuss and O'Neill or VHB, and you're gonna get a, a, a three-lane Forest Glen going down there with two right-hand turn lanes, and you'll fly through there in you know less than three minutes on any time of the day or night. 
Well, maybe we don't want it. But that design's right. already been finished. The VHB had some concepts. Is that the, the yeah, one you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, about? they've laid it out, so yeah. it's just a matter of doing the uh, the hard work now. But, but we've, yeah. we've reviewed that pretty heavily in this room, Mark, that right. particular intersection. The intersection is one, one We had yeah. one, one review of it. No, and i got to tell you, no. my personal opinion, it was terrible. Just for the, the, the exact reason I'm yeah. saying it, yeah. it really turned it into Boston Road. But, Mark, come on. There was hardly, there was no widening of lanes all the way down around the corner. It was right at the intersection. It was intersection. It was done for staging. Mm -hmm. Staging vehicles. No, Forest Glen becomes yeah. a two-lane road. Going no, down it doesn't. No, it doesn't. There's there no was some way. lane. Um, it's a right-hand turn lane. There was two lanes leaving uh, Long Meadow, and I think there was also, and I, they exist, exist now, two lanes at uh, Converse. Right. Yeah, it was just right up at the end where they flared everything they over. To that, do, that's to my memory staging. of it. That's all well. they did. Yeah. It uh, doesn't stay to. You know, you talk about the quaintness. I, I was thinking this, you and I see different things as we drive. I was driving into town the other morning. I said, how quaint it is, those big chunks of asphalt curb laying in the road from the snow plows. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've, you know. And yeah, that's because we don't have <laughs> granite curve or concrete curve going down through there, which should be there because we're running snow plows down mm -hmm. through there. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, as the design advances, it sounds to me like we might, it might be a good idea to. Well, I think it, you mm -hmm. and Steven it was always our plan to, to do you. exactly what we did when VHB yeah. completed their design. And now we have a different vendor. I would think that. Um, we'd follow the same path, but yeah, you're, just uh, gonna, Mark, you're just going to turn it into drawings now. In, in yeah. yeah, point well taken. I, I don't, I don't know the right way to go about answering that question. Why don't you bring it back and let us see the thing? Because uh, Mark has a different feeling for that than than I think I do. Because it's not, we're not two laning Forest Glen. So no. yeah, I don't even want that to linger in the in these speakers out in the public because right. that's not what it is. It's right at the intersection with the flare intersections. Like, that's how I remember it too. Yeah. yeah. So because the other thing is, if if we made those two lanes going in either direction, uh, they'd still get crowded because more people would come through town. They would just say, Quite well, possibly. it's quicker if you go yeah, through yeah, Long Meadow. Yeah. I mean, and they won't take any of the other streets that go through Springfield. So you, there's no winning in this situation uh, by making it a bigger, uh, you know, making the roads wider and changing the look of the town. So and, and I think we'll revisit that. The fluted um, poles, if I'm not mistaken, was only for the main arteries, the fluted poles. But well, we had a we, discussion. Yeah, well, we again we said that was a standard. And, yeah, but, and the but state it's, it's for the it, main. It's for the main yeah. artery work. Well, we don't have that many intersections in town. No. Well, it's for the main artery, so where they're doing improvements yeah. that we'd go the fluted poles right. because Stephen didn't think we had fluted poles, and we really do. Right. They're on Long Meadow Street all over the place. Your but, uh, light poles. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. All, Andy, the, all the fluted to black. What do you? Twenty-five intersections. How many intersections? No. Oh uh, God, twelve maybe. Yeah. Twelve intersections. Yeah. So, yeah. And, it's something like that. And the main streets, you know, like we say, the tip, pro the tip project may cover a lot of those if we can get that. So, can, can I just so. ask what this Bliss Road? Sure. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Well, okay. Great. Um, That's right. the first time we've seen. So, that. two additional <laughs> projects. I just want to talk about what we're working on. Um, the first one being the complete streets. Uh, we were just awarded uh, about $204,000 um, from the Complete Streets program for two projects. Um, the two projects being the William Street Crossing near the Community Center and also the William Street Crossing at Grassy Gutter and Merriweather, where the plan would be to install the um, what they call RRFDs. Uh, the flashing beacons that you see on Converse Street. Something similar to that. Uh, unfortunately, we can't use those exact, um, that exact system anymore. Oh. Uh, that's a whole other story. But so, <laughs> two projects, um, $204,000 for two crossings. Uh, the big one would be the community house uh, area crossing of Williams, which involves possibly a raised crosswalk there with the flashing beacons as well as a possible uh, minor reconfiguration of the intersection of Williams at Route 5. Um, and I think the plan um, as of right now would be to remove that second egress lane 
uh, as you're heading westbound on Williams and entering Route 5. We have those two lanes, consolidating that to, to one lane, um, but that's not cast in stone. So it would involve that and the crossing, and then the other project is the crossing right out here. Is it is it there Williams and Bliss or or is it Grassy Gutter and Bliss or Grassy Gutter and Williams? Williams. Williams. So it's Grassy Gutter and Williams. So it's yes, and yeah. Yeah. Merriweather. Right yeah. and Merriweather. That was our, I believe that was our number one. Um, yes. Priority. I agree. As far as complete streets, so that mm -hmm. so that anyways, so that they just got awarded uh, um, a couple a couple of days ago. Uh, the second project uh, would be the. Um, and this is not anything that has been um, advanced at all. It's an idea. Um, and we prepared some drawings. We got, you know, I think it's an exciting project. And I, I, guess, I guess we're calling it the Town Center Streetscape Project, which would be the periphery or perimeter around Big Y, as well as the Bliss Road corridor from Bliss Court westerly to Grassy Gutter. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of a hope to make that um, more of a, a safe uh, road for uh, pedestrian crossings, pedestrians that are just walking as well as uh, possibly bicyclists. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about making communities more walking friendly and so that people will, uh, well, it saves parking spaces, but it also gets people out. It's a public health issue, mm -hmm. you know, really. And then, you know, when I, and I've talked before too about what you're showing is having bike lanes, you know, approaching on Bliss, approaching on Williams, uh, you know, so that people will feel more comfortable biking into the shops to do shopping uh, because, again, that's, we should be providing that for the community. I mean, it would really be a, you know, you look at someone needs to get a quart of milk and they take a two-ton piece of metal, get in it, you know, to drive, you know, you know, couple you know maybe a football field and then get the food and then go back and and you know we really uh you know so i'm optimistic you know looking at this because i really think that that's our town really is you know we're a bike a biking community and the more bike friendly we can be approaching the shops you know that would be the first step i know there's a, a lot of people uh, you know looking at you know helping advance long metal be more green community and this is you know, this is the path we need to take. It's uh, unfortunately it's not free, but uh, you know, I appreciate you looking at that and, and trying to focus in that direction. I mean, for me, I think that's important. Are you, yeah. you going to be uh, taking properties to do that? Are you talking about the bike, center? Bike stuff? No, I think it's really a narrowing of what's there now to create mm -hmm. that space. Most of it would be a, nar a road narrowing project, in mm -hmm. fact. Yeah. I, 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 I would like to see, again, this is just some ideas from our department, our office. Yeah. Um, you know, I, was, uh, I would kind of like to see a narrowing of, um, of, of bliss on the north side of Big Y. Right now there's two lanes. If we can kind of narrow that up, mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be, um, it, you'd have a little bit of traffic calming, a little mm -hmm. bit, as well as uh, pedestrian ease of Looks like being able to cross the road. But one, on one of these drawings, you show changes to what I'll call the big wide parking lot and their flow. Has that been discussed with them as part of their re, re, revision to what? So is that their thinking now and right now of what? You know? y yes. What I what we have asked Big Y to do, and really it's not a whole lot of adjustment for them to make, <laughs> is to ask them to please. Uh, whatever they do to their um, their truck backing in area. <laughs> well, no, yeah, whatever they, however they design their parking lot, which I have reviewed that design preliminary. It's yeah. preliminary yeah. at this point. To to please make it um, comply with our future um, uh, requests to you know do our project. So I don't want them to build something in direct conflict with with what we want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. So the. Yes, we are working with the designer of the Big Y. Okay, so are you are aware, I assume, that when Big Y was last approved an expansion, there was a constraint put on times of the day when they could get truck deliveries? I've heard this. 
Well, you're hearing it. It's it's a fact. I was at this town meeting, so you know that that that's in already in the existence. Now maybe a design like this would ease their pain a little bit, but but because the issue is for a truck to back in there, you're basically closing down. Yes. You know that. I've part. sat in that traffic. Right. So and the, well, <coughs> supposed to be before you have to. Well, maybe you have to work real early. No. I think I was going home one day, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so okay, that, I, I was just looking at that to see what, what state that was a thing. So. Yeah. And that is not necessarily the latest iteration of well, the that, that's design. Fine. The big line design that, that may not be the latest one. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess lastly, I want to uh, briefly talk about our uh, our engineering aide, uh, Peter Vancini. Just um, he did a lot of work uh, procuring two grants. Uh, from the Department of Local Services, as they're called. They're a subsidiary of the Department of Revenue, Massachusetts. And he um, applied for two grants. Uh, one was uh, $20,000 for, um, $20, for um, us to be able to prepare an ADA, American with Disabilities Act, transition plan. So that was $20,000 as well as, I believe, $25,000, another $25,000 for, um, I'll, I'll call it geocoding work. Um, Peter's an expert, I would say, at GIS, Geographic Information Systems, and he's working on our plan to implement GIS into, um, you know, our operations. and. I think the first project that we're going to undertake with this will be using the geocoding and GIS to inventory um, our storm sewer um, system. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cover the entire town, but he's he's you know he really he did a lot of work uh, with this, and uh, I just want to talk about some of the other. Um, but you're going to hit inlets and outlets, or no? The what we have planned is to inventory. Just this is at the start mm -hmm. um, to inventory the storm drainage uh, structures themselves, condition assessments, right. as well as um, locating them. Uh, lo actually, locating mm -hmm. where they are, mapping them, mapping them. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and then step two would be someday to evaluate the, um, you know, maybe make the connections with the with the storm culverts. Mm -hmm. For starters, we're going to work on the um, storm structures. It's funny. I thought we had a GS uh, a layer on that already. We don't, though. Are you thinking of our sewer system? No, I was thinking of drainage. Okay. We do we, have we do have mapping of our drainage storm drainage system, um, storm um, sanitary sewers, water sanitary. lines. Every we do, okay. um, but this kind of takes it to another level where. Um, this information is um, put into uh, a GIS uh, ArcView mm -hmm. program, and it not only consists of mapping, that's probably 10% of the importance of this, it's the information that goes along with the mapping is what really makes GIS um, um, something that's worthwhile. So that's what... Um, and Richard scratching his head. What information? Water flow? I mean, what? Oh, you can use it for a lot of unlimited. stuff. So you unlimited. Yeah, it's unlimited. It's yeah. just the mapping is just, they, they, they tell you, mapping is just 10% of, of the importance of this. It's the information mm -hmm. that you could put into the entities on the map uh, that's unlimited. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have a map of a catch base, and we know where it is. Um, just imagine yourself clicking on it, uh, clicking on it, and then... Uh, finding out uh, the condition of the catch basin. Maybe you can find out when it was installed. Um, Maybe a picture of last it. Last time it was inspected, a picture of it, mm -hmm. um, and so forth. Um, and, and this can go a long way, not only with storm, storm sewers, sanitary sewers, roadways themselves, uh, roads, road condition assessments, mm -hmm. sidewalk assessments. Uh, we've started some of that um, recently. But not nearly as, you know, how much we'd like to at this point. Okay. It's, it's like, uh, you know, 
um, you know, like when they have boiler systems and they have all these different valves and everything, and then now it's all computerized and you can tell everything that's going on. And the way you're doing that for the whole, you know, sewage system, maybe road system, and, and uh, so you could sit somewhere with a little mouse and tell you everything that's going on. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, you know, I, I did want to ask one more question about this bliss court, um, you know, where the tennis courts are. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at this, and I, and you know, I know one of the things with the bliss courts was, or with the uh, balloon courts, was that we were going to have tournaments. And you know, I've seen, I've been there when there's been a lot of people visiting, but there doesn't seem to be any crosswalks over towards the shops. You know, because one of the hopes is that we would have people who would then cross the street, you know, cross and go over the maybe the big Y or go over to the shops and go over to restaurants. There is one proposed. Um, at least this is, again, this is, a, you know, it's a preliminary. preliminary stuff. But There's three proposed crosswalks um, west of Bliss Court, and there's one um, to the east of Bliss Court connecting the big Y parking lot to the shops. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not labeled as such. Okay. Uh, it's, you, can, you can kind of see the, um, you know, I was hoping for a raised crosswalk there. You can see uh, on page three, on page three, just to the left of the B in Bliss Road. This that, over here? That is one of the ones um, Go he mentioned earlier. Okay. Going up yeah. on the page, no, yeah. straight up, right there. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, but that's, I, I'm talking about tennis courts here. So the I think the idea the is court. to use the crosswalk here, right there and then, back. well, I don't know that page, we would be asking for <coughs> to park in a big wide parking lot. I think, generally speaking, they, they've they been using the, um, the shop's parking lot, and I think that's why the, the need for the crosswalk is where it is. Yeah. Well, I guess the thing I would consider is that, you know, this is where people are going to be parked. Yeah. And from this parking lot, is there what the best crosswalk is they have to go all the way over here? Where are they going? Well, if they want to get something to eat, they want to go across here. They want to cross right here. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I got you. Yeah, I, I guess we hadn't thought of that. Yep. Because, they, you know, I mean, I... So if you're parked at the courts and you want to go to Big Y, for example, or if you want to go to Big Y and then you want to go to the hamburger, uh, Max Burger, um, yeah, let's so. cross Bliss Court. Um, or the kitchen, you know. You, yeah. can, you yeah. cut this way, this way, you should have access to two different sure. ways. I mean, you know, just good to think that. I mean, it's, um, we have to give you equal opportunity both sides of the shops. Yep. I think it's yep. only fair. You know, I agree. We're going to redo work there. Um, both sides should, you know, have equal opportunity because, you know, there's different products that they, that they offer. Sure. Um, so, all right, well. I got one other question. One other question. Not even a question, it's a statement. Okay. Grassy gutter doesn't have any color on it on your paving map. In so much that it's not scheduled for the next five years is what I'm picking up on? It's going to be sand. <laughs> oh, there's, worse, there's worse roads in town than yeah. grassy gutter. I'd have to drive it, Richard, to... <laughs> there's a lot well, you will tonight as you leave. Yeah. There's a lot worse I, I will tonight as I leave. As you leave. <laughs> it, uh, it, it was destroyed when the construction of the high school took place. Okay. Mm -hmm. the heavy believe, traffic. It or, believe it or not, I, I, there have been some roads, and this is very, I get, you know, I get a lot of calls, roads. Um, yeah. the, the, I don't want to say what the road is, uh, but mm -hmm. not now, but somebody called me up and they said, uh, you know, my road is uh, really bad. And um, I said, well, I'll go right out there. And, you know, well, I'll go out there. And I actually did go right out there. It was lunchtime. And it, the road was a disaster. So the calls help. Um, you know, it, it didn't appear as, um, it wasn't rated that high. Um, it didn't, it, you know, I didn't uh, have it as planned. So, uh, you know, that call, you know, I went out there and now that road appears on either next year or the following year. Yeah. Of course, I, I'm not so going to get the phone calls on grassy gutters. So, I mean, yeah. I don't. Well, I'm taking this <laughs> really, as a phone call. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, tell, uh, yeah. right in front of the $80 million high school. and. It was missed. They should have done it when they finished the high school. And it's uh, it's a it's a heavily used. Yeah, yeah heavy, and, and there's heavy traffic on it too. There's sure. delivery trucks, sure. buses. Yeah. 
down. Okay. DP, okay. DPW trucks. Vacation. I, I know we have some folks on our board who would talk about roads and infrastructure all night long if we let them. So I'm going well, to close the discussion. It needs to be talked about all night long. Don't make long. me get the hammer. This was a minor discussion, John. <laughs> But thank you very much for coming. You're in. welcome. Thank you. And uh, if we have more questions, uh, uh, Tom. By the way, Tom call. lives on the north, uh, the south <laughs> side of town, so don't worry about the asphalt down there. Okay. <laughs> Forget about that. Forget it. No, no. Thanks, Andy. You're great. Yeah. You know. I, uh, I have new tires. I can get through it. <laughs> I'm set. So, um, you thank you very much. Sports. And now yeah. we get to get to hear about the debt schedule discussion. Is that it? I didn't know anything could be more exciting than the uh, roads, but uh, this We're is it. We're going to find out shortly. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the debt schedule, I was just like basically looking for some feedback from you folks. Um, okay. What I provided you was uh, our current excludable debt as we see it today. And for FY 2018, it was $1.87 on the tax rate. The DPW project, we will be out bonding um, very shortly. Um, as, as they said, they're going to be opening bids in the latter part of, of March. They could mm -hmm. potentially have a shovel in the ground um, before summertime actually hits. And once that shovel gets in the ground, that the cash flow starts to go hopefully in, but it's going to be going out the door. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be an issue of, of timing, of bonding, and things of that nature. Um, just putting together the debt service projection that we had uh, that I had done a little while ago back when we identified the general fund would be taking about 75 percent of that project and doing a level principal payment over a 20 year four percent type of loan um, it adds immediately 54 cents to our tax rate and to me I thought that was too big of a jump quite honestly to see in one year and I don't know how this board felt on it. The, um, the DPW alone would add 69 cents, but there's some mitigation of that being the refinancing of uh, Long Meadow High School knocked off a few pennies going off forward, and also the, the full payment of the uh, um, high school excess that we had to buy off. So um, we can do a couple things. Um, we can postpone for a little while, potentially, the actual borrowing. Um, putting it off into FY19, um, we can we can structure. We have we have the capability of structuring the loan so there are smaller principal payments in the early years, at least that first year, until we can gradually build it up to a, a number that we're going to be living with for the next you know 18 years or so. Um, so I was just looking for feedback before we actually started, before I started working with the finance, financial advisor, um, only because, again, when I think I came in for the refinancing of the high school, it was kind of all put together for you folks. And, you know, there were, there were com not comments, but suggestions of, you know, could we have done this or could we have done that? And it was kind of after the fact. So I didn't want to run into that same scenario where I'm coming in with something that it's after the fact. Um, I'd like to, you know, if there are, if there are any concerns, about that increase um, and how to mitigate them, I guess I would just like to um, get them up front now before we start preparing uh, some some bonding uh, numbers. Okay, and, and when you talk about you know the, the uh, like sixty nine cents, uh, that's per thousand. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, so Paul, a question is the extent to which we have the ability to if you will, design our, our debt service. I, I remember sitting in a room with you and a couple other people when we were talking about the high school and we were literally looking at how much money we want to add to the tax rate each year for the first X number of years before it leveled out. Do we theoretically have the ability to do that same thing for the DPW? Um, I believe so. There are certain criteria that we would have to uh, follow, and that's where I would get the financial advisor involved to meet that certain criteria. But we do have the capability of paying, uh, as you're saying, Mark, maybe a smaller principal in year one and year two, and then once we get to year three, have it maximize, and then have it start coming back downwards. So we do have flexibility. 
if that's the if that's the desire of building this up for over the next you know over a two or three year period with gradual increases. Well, I mean, what what you've shown is that that in fiscal year 26 or 24, there's a no, I'm taking back 23. 20, 23, there is there's a, a hu there's a huge right. drop drop off, right? There, there's a major drop because obviously you can see from from right. that schedule we we are fully. Uh, repaying three of our outstanding loans. Uh, Blue Bear Hill and Wolf Swamp has two loans outstanding. They are fully paid off. And the Eli Way Inglewood drainage that we did a few years back is also fully paid off. So at that point in time, there is a gap, as you can see from there. Yeah. The tax, the impact on the tax rate with the current valuation drops 34 cents in that year. Um, we can we can escalate this so there's a gradual, um, a small increase. Um, and then really ramp it up once we hit that level. The only thing that I'm also concerned about, and you have to remember, is the Council on Aging potentially is coming around, and potentially in the, in, in the, in the foreseeable future, you may have a, a middle school project that is on the horizon. So, you know, I need to take those into consideration in preparing yeah. all this too. Um, I mean, otherwise, yes, we could fit it in easily. We can ramp it up a little bit and then really start the payments in 2023 but at the same time i mean that's kind of kicking the can down the road to a certain degree too well yeah but but it it has a a dampening effect on our on our our tax rate you know and it, maybe if that's kicking the can down the road what it really is doing is saying we're not going to jar everybody with the, their taxes going up 54 cents in 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 one year i guess right. the other the other potential and I know nobody's going to like this, but it is to take some of the remaining debt for what I'll call the it's Blueberry Hill, Wolf Swamp, Ely Way, Englewood, and kind of roll that in with the DPW into one large bond and bond them all. So it really, if you will, mitigates part. It, it's, a, it's, it's essentially taking the fiscal year 23 drop off and moving it up till now, but having it not be as significant a a drop off that that's possible i would just have to look at the interest rates on those to see if it's if it's worth our while right right i mean if, it, if we're paying 1.2 percent interest we're not doing that right part. i mean I, again yes we can restructure a lot of that and, and, and you know roll it up in, into a big ball and take it apart but again it, it may or may not be feasible but it's certainly another option to look at it's one i had not considered in the past i, I guess tom i would just yeah. say for the record my i mean my preference would be to, to do things gradually and not have step increases that 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 are in, on the order of 50 cents or so if, yeah. if we can do that I mean that you're mm -hmm. looking for input that would be mine but mm -hmm. and, and Paul it looks like the next big drop would be in fiscal year 34 2034 uh, yeah certainly if, <coughs> if we keep on carrying this out uh, you know, there's a huge drop in in 2034, yes. Yeah. I mean, it drops 63 cents. I, in I plan to be here for that. I, I, oh. <laughs> that uh, so that'll be big. So. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't <laughs> you don't plan to be in that seat. You might be here, but yeah. not here. I might be down the road. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I guess, like I said, I'm, I'm just looking again before I really start getting into, into this. Um, you know, just for a little guidance on how people feel about these increases. Um, you know, again, understanding too that we have a council on aging. <coughs> Potentially, that is is you know the last um, prices that were up on the board when the council on aging um, gentleman was here uh, almost reflect the same dollar value as the DPW. I think they were up to 14 million, um, and this is you know 16 million. So the impacts are going to be the same. And how is that going to work into the equation? Two and three years when we, you know, put a shovel on the ground for the council on aging. Paul, oh, what 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 the notation down here? Fiscal year 2019 bu budget currently has 350k for DPW equates to tax rate of 193. I, How's that? Right. I I I put that in. Um, it, currently in the budget, um, I put a a reduction in the in the debt that we currently have outstanding. We have a ban that we floated for the purchase of the tennis courts that I, I wanted to at least gradually get the increase going um, if, if there was no permanent bonding. So I had put $350,000, this is a small token um, drop or principal payment 
um, only to get it into the budget to keep that budget go or keep that amount going on an upward slope as opposed to a decline and then shooting up higher in the next fiscal year. It's more of a note for myself. Uh, gotcha. You know, and, and, and that budget number is, is equal on the revenue side because it's a debt exclusion um, as opposed to the, uh, or conversely on, on the expense side. So it can be easily dropped or changed um, and, and won't affect the operating budget in one which way, shape, or form. Paul, can I just ask another question of, I, and I know you probably answered this before, but I've forgotten. The, the split of the capital between DPW water and sewer, yes. and, and, and it's not, you know, I mean, when we buy front loader, it's 50, 25, 25, and all, you know, what formulas did you use for, the, for that split? And can we tweak that as a way of uh, trying to reduce our tax rate? Um, I, I want to say I, I did, uh, Boy, you know, I, I don't I don't remember exactly. There were a few things that I had proposed at the time, and I, I'd have to look those up, Mark. Okay. I, I, I don't remember exactly if, if, I know one of them was full-time equivalents because of the people, um, but I think I gave like three, two or three different scenarios that had various percentages, and I think this one was almost like the middle of the road, I believe. Yeah, and I think we actually reviewed it at the yes, time. Yes, you actually so, reviewed it and, so and, and actually took the stance right. to, to take this at, at this point in time. Right. So, so people should know that when we're bonding $21 million or $21.2 million, which is what you show here, essentially it's 15 or $16 million goes to the general fund, $2.8 million to water, and $2.5 million to, to, to sewer. The sewer. Right. Which again could impact those. The, those rates are also going to be Im impacted. Um, we have, might have to review those also. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions about the projections here? Um, and the. Um, do we need to discuss the estimated receipts? Uh, is there anything that. I, I, I guess the feedback that I'm getting from the board is, is to keep it on a graduating um, in, incline with the potential of, in 2023, um, filling in a higher principal amount because there's a big drop-off. The one thing that I'm thinking is interest rates are still pretty good right now, right? I mean, yeah. in, in interest rates are creeping up on the short term mostly. In the long term, uh, again, uh, I'm using 4%. I just confirmed that number because uh, the DPW folks, the uh, the architects and engineering folks wanted a number for them to utilize, and that was the number that I got back from, from our financial advisor just within the last three weeks or so. Because there is some danger as you push, the, you push this up and push this off. True. And mm -hmm. they're going to go up. I mean. I, right. Yeah. But, I mean, we're talking about if we – you know, it's something as simple as bonding in June versus July. Um, if we bond in July, we would only have one semi-annual interest payment, as opposed to if we bond in June, we would have two semi-annual interest payments in the following year and a principal payment. So a, 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 a shift of 30 days makes a huge difference yeah. in this particular mm -hmm. case. And that's about the time that we're going to need that cash flow is, is late June, or early July. So that's, that's the other <coughs> part of it. Now, a lot of the short-term lending stuff that you've talked about have been pretty low interest, you know, and so... Yes, but, but those are creeping up where we were borrowing at 0.55%. I, yeah. I think the last time I, uh, when we borrowed for the DPW last June, I think that was 1.3% or something to that nature. Right, yeah. Uh, so they are creeping up a little bit. But the long-term ones are still going to cost us... They're going to yeah, cost you a little bit like more, but they're, but they're locked mm -hmm. in. Um, yeah. Again, they have to protect themselves for 20 years, so they're locked in from, you know, protect themselves from inflation. So, mm -hmm. so the, yeah. the, the other approach we took with the schools, grant, granted we were borrowing $44 million, not 12 or 15, I guess it's $15 million, was we did it in two sections, mm -hmm. two, two different bonding periods. And, you know, and part of it we did that is, we wanted to get some money borrowed early because we thought interest rates were going up then. Little did we know. And, and we also didn't need all the money up front. It was a longer right. project and we could take the money. Is you know, I don't know if, what the costs of bonding are and if for, for $16 million, it's, it's worth thinking about that as well. But 
I, I'd, I'd like to have you look at it at least, sure. Paul, and there, see if that's that, That's fine. I mean, the cost of an issuance is probably fifty or $60,000 for a, for a permanent that's loan, which is substantial. <laughs> um, what I was hoping to do is, is, as they spoke about the DIF project, I was hoping to capitalize bonding the DIF simultaneously with the, DF, uh, with the DPW in, in order that we could reduce or have some economies of scale. When it Charge it all to the DIF project. And well, you know, whatever, <laughs> fair share based upon percentages, yeah. but um, yeah. it, it would save a few dollars in doing it in that fashion. Now, if we combine those, would that inter interfere with the project or with the agreement that we have with the no, developer? No, it, it, it wouldn't have any impact on the agreement. We, we'd, we would have it as one borrowing, but they'd be two separate projects. Maybe, you know, the numbers could easily be separated out. Easily separated out. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Anyway, if you, if you want to look at a, maybe a couple of scenarios. Yeah, I, I, I will call Clark Rowell and, the, you know, and see what his um, ideas <coughs> are and, and kind of brainstorm with him to see what we can't come up with. And, um, again, we won't be able to, to get this done until late spring, early summer. So mm -hmm. um, we have some time to really put together a few scenarios and talk about it. Okay, okay. great. So should we move to the uh, budget calendar review? Yeah, the, on the budget calendar, um, we're just, uh, Steve and I were hoping that, <coughs> or in, on the budget calendar, there's a, uh, a block of time set aside for a special select board meetings, March 6th to March 15th. Mm -hmm. And then the public hearing, we was wondering if, if the board could solidify those, um, those certain dates of mm -hmm. when potentially you'd want to have budget review and so on and so forth. Okay, so we have a regular meeting on the 5th. Yeah, regular meeting on the 5th. And then you're thinking the 6th. Any, anywhere within those next, from that next Tuesday, the 6th, until that following Friday, Really, you have to get all your budget work done, um, a lot of warrant work done, so on and so forth. So, you know, I know mm -hmm. uh, there was one year where we met every night um, for four nights straight. There was, last year was a couple night meetings and it was done. Um, the budget right now looks, uh, well, the budget right now looks good. Um, we have one big variable still and that's the Scantic Valley health insurance rates mm -hmm. um, I got preliminary numbers today and they were not encouraging whatsoever um, mm -hmm. I, I am and they, they, they never do come in encouraging let me make that statement also um, mm -hmm. but that could make a big swing and where Stephen and I are currently um, if they come in with a reasonable increase we do have some money budgeted for an increase it originally was 7.5 percent um, I, I personally had dropped those because of the um, recent history of the Scandic Valley Group it has been very good. And by recent history, I mean the claims history over the last six, six months to a year. Um, mm -hmm. So we potentially could have a, 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 you know, a, a budget that would be prepared that would have some excess money in it. <clears throat> um, and by that I mean there was a challenge to come in with an increase of 2.3% instead of 2.5%. Um, and, and potentially we're looking at coming in with the budget not going up to the full two and a half percent. Stephen and I are having a discussion and we, again we'd like the board to weigh in about if there is extra money what are we going to do with it. Um, the two options are A, we can certainly reduce the tax rate by four or five cents if it's a hundred thousand dollars or B, um, we can actually take that money and while we reduce the operating budget in order to offset future costs and hitting hitting the prop two and a half limitations to take that extra money and put it into the operational stabilization fund um, it's the same discussion we have every year i think um, right about, what, <laughs> that sounds about familiar. what do we do i mean i have yeah. my opinion on it uh, steven has his ultimately it's going to be your decision <coughs> but mm -hmm. if there is any feedback in that regard um, you know, we would like to have that now for so when we do present the budget to you folks later next week, we can probably build it in. The, the one thing that I've been thinking is that if you reduce the tax rate or don't increase it all the way, 
um, the money, I know the, that money's gone, but it does give you excess capacity, you know, for the next year. Well, in case something came up and you had to, you it, needed to increase it further. The, the, the money is gone for that one year only. One year, right. The capacity would not change. But the capacity goes up if you don't use all two and a half, right? You would, you would leave what is, is known as excess capacity on the table. Um, so I guess in that regard. You can get it the you, next year. Yeah, you would have it next, you would still have it next year. Um, you just use or lose that ability to raise that in that one year. Right. Um, but the, the, there's the excess capacity that you leave on the table from the current rate, and there's excess capacity between the, your current tax rate and your, when you hit the $25 million. That number would not change. Uh, right, right, right. So again, I mean, yep. it, it'd be my recommendation to put the money in the operational stabilization fund, quite honestly. Um, it's, it, it's an area where Moody's has said that our bond rating or uh, for communities that have our same bond rating at AA2, that our reserves aren't as high as those nationally. Um, I also feel that if we do hit the 2.5%, we have a little better cushion um, in, in, in our own bank accounts. And I just feel, too, that um, if we, uh, you know, again, and that would address some of Moody's concerns. Um, and, and again, if we do talk about legislation, about going above and beyond the two and a half percent, I don't know how the state's going to look at it, saying, "Well, you didn't raise money in these years; you had an opportunity to." Mm -hmm. are, are they going to look at that favorably or negatively? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could argue both sides of that. Um, that you know, we did everything we could, tried to keep the operating budget as low as we could. We still hit the twenty the twenty five dollar tax rate, um, but at the same time, we left a hundred thousand dollars sitting on the side and didn't take advantage of its use. So. Mm -hmm. Well, but the, it, Paul, does, doesn't, and I'm trying to understand this better. If we tax it, let's say 2.3%, so that other. It's about $100,000 $100, that we leave with that. Okay. But doesn't that leave that $100,000 for down at the end? It may not leave it for the next year, but it may leave it for the year after that or the year after that. If you, in other words, if you. If you, if you, if you leave that in 2019, it's going to have no bearing on 2020. Right. Correct. But but it's a hundred thousand dollars that you're still below the tax ceiling of twenty five dollar mill rate. Correct. So somewhere down the road, so you could, I mean, in theory, the road, if you, you did that for twenty three years in a row, you'd get a twenty fifth year for or twenty fourth year for free, it kind of, or something <laughs> like that, right? I mean, if, potentially. If, <laughs> but you know, you almost do the same thing by putting it away in the stabilization fund. Except we never take money out of the stabilization fund. I mean, the stabilization fund is always its a rainy day fund. You know, we won't, we won't use money in the stabilization fund for recurring expenses. I mean, getting money out of the stabilization fund through whether it's the finance committee or anybody else in town or even the town, town meeting, I mean, short, short of, our, uh, of our natural disaster in 2011, I, 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 will say I don't remember it's happened. Well, right, that's probably the only time, that, the last time that we took it out was the October 2011 snowstorm. Um, and we're just getting back to the a place where we, we, we replenished all that money. Um, two things I'll say, you do have a policy that you wanted your, your, um, your general reserves, which is your free cash and your operational stabilization fund between five and 10% of your operating revenues. It's roughly just above 6%. So we have a little so ways between, to go. That's between five and ten. It is. It is. You have a little ways to go. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot what the second one was I wanted to say. But um, again, now that, that just, you know, I we're agree. not 100% there. It's, a, it's an interesting discussion. Right. And the, uh, so, Tom, can I suggest that Paul's yeah. original thing is, is scheduling. We just do a doodle polls rather than Marie's not here. Just try to put, that, mm -hmm. put out something so we can get people to give you dates for. Right. I mean, we can do that through email systems, just everybody answer what nights they're available. Put okay. together those budget. Okay. I and mean, I can so help you six, figure that out. Doodle poll. Okay. I uh, think Debbie's done some doodle polls, too. So. Uh, you know, and, and, and this budget presentation may be very easy. Let Tom do the doodle poll. That'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the Yankee no, doodle uh, poll. No, I'm just saying the, the, the budget I'll come may be very easy. The feather. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but we still want to put aside some time for... Oh, no, I, I, no ab absolutely. By all means, do um, schedule those meetings. It's going to take you a few nights. Uh, again, mm -hmm. you have to go through those warrant articles. Yeah. You still have a capital presentation to be yeah. well, put before you. I mean, we could articles. just... 
tentatively try to plan it for, uh, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday. I don't know, or Wednesday and Thursday. What? I, I make myself available. Do you make yourself? I don't. Tuesday? I don't know what my schedule. You're not sure. Yeah. Okay. That's that's why I'm. Just, I mean, I can sit and here and look at it. But she was mentioning need that budget form date too. Right. The. Uh, yeah, we use it up and Oh, that form. budget date, and that would be that would be sometime in that um, just before the fifteenth, because uh, you are scheduled to vote on it on the nineteenth. So budget form, and would we, would we want to do that on a Monday night, like the twelfth? Um, if it, we're ready, it, it, ready? It, if you're if you're ready for it, I think um, you know. I, I just I, I can't really tell you if, if until you, we. Get I don't know if you're going to be ready for it, really. If Scanting Valley's numbers come in, I think you'll be very pleased with the budget mm -hmm. um, that Stephen has presented. If, if Scanting Valley's come, its numbers come in a lot higher, we have to go back to the drawing board, and there may be I mean, that may generate a lot of discussion. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get, why don't we just tentative? Let's look at you know whatever we'll select board meeting on the fifth, and then on the sixth and the seventh. We could plan on meeting at seven, and then uh, hopefully we'll be done after two nights, right? I mean that's a possibility, and yeah, then it's possible. And then if the twelfth, if we did the uh, public budget forum, but you're going you're going to go out with the doodle poll, right? He's well, we'll just, right this is it. You can call me doodle anytime. But you, you don't want. have Marie here. I mean, that's <laughs> you don't have Marie here. And then we'll check with Marie. Yeah. And see what her schedule is. Well, at least tentatively, we have some dates. Right, yeah, I mean, it's going to be that week, I assume. Right. Um, right. Um, yeah. And then uh, if there's going to be major conflicts, you know, just let me know. We'll, um, we can move it to shift it around. We got a little flexibility. Um, but I know most of you probably, you know, already kind of look at Mondays as sort of tied up to the town. So. And then the rest of the dates are pretty much set. Right, the rest of the dates are pretty much set in stone yeah. until we get, I think the annual election now is also set. Right. Still in those <laughs> and at the, very end. the school school board, or the school uh, superintendent, um, when are we going to be seeing him? He usually presents the committee, and that it says February 14th, which is... Mm -hmm. uh, he did it to the finance committee, but does he usually come to uh, the select board? Would yeah, he come I'm, to us? I'm, I'm sure if you would like the school committee to present, he uh, I just as soon have him in on, on the on the sixth. On the fifth, oh the sixth. Uh, on the sixth, the yeah. The, the, the fifth okay. is really set aside for Stephen's presentation to you on this and your other business. So, okay. Um, um, but I think on the sixth to have them in right away. Um, Okay. Would probably be the best thing because it, it, it's kind of going to set the you know they're they're a big number. I just put it that way. A big number is from a budget standpoint. It's a, oh, good, number. It's a good number. Yes, it is a good so number far, so far. So we oh, should see I, the I, first I, day. Like so I said, I'm just keeping my fingers <laughs> crossed on the Scantic Valley <laughs> numbers on Thursday, and if those are good numbers, it it should be a pretty good budget presentation without much All hard right. decisions. Well, you know they, they did. Published the school uh, budget uh, was published in the uh, Long Meadow newspaper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully and they made their yeah. public presentation on it. Got to look at it, uh, some of the preliminary numbers, but yeah, we'll see that there. Um, all right. So, so, we'll see if he can make it on the 6th. That is uh, where <clears> we're at <throat> with that. And so, uh, I guess we could go to the uh, town manager's report. Um, very quickly, uh, Stephen did give you folks a, a written presentation. Um, two of those things have already been discussed, the grants with the um, complete streets and the grants with the Medical Reserve Corp. I uh, just wanted to let you know that the bylaw review working group has been meeting. The areas that they've been focusing on are the refining the infill lot bylaw based upon the feedback from the last town meeting. Modernizing the bylaw by regarding commercial vehicle parking and decorative structure signage in front yards of for non-residential uses. Um, other than that, the Westcom, the regional dispatch center, they are out actively recruiting an executive director. 
Um, so that is, is moving forward. I believe those resumes are due. Um, I think there's a copy of, of the uh, job uh, description in your packet. Those are due, I believe, on March 9th. So hopefully within the next 30 to 60 days, they'll have somebody on board to keep that going in the right direction. I will report that the we recently received last week a, um, a waiver from the, the state library group. Um, and, and that waiver is just in regard to the, the state money that is presented to the, to the uh, store's library. It's about 16,000 plus or minus. Uh, there are certain criteria that need to be met on an annual basis, both financially with number of hours and certain other criteria. Um, we do not actually meet the criteria from a financial standpoint that they have set in the guidelines, <coughs> and that where this, that's where this waiver comes into play. We haven't play. met it for years, though. We haven't met it for years, and, and, and we've always received the waiver because the bottom line is we've treated the library, <coughs> in essence, very similar to any other department that... Um, that is part of the budget process. So they weren't cut proportion. If they were cut, they were cut proportionally to other departments, or if, if money was added to it, um, they got their fair share of the money. So we did get that that waiver last week, uh, which was good news. And the police chief just wanted me to report that again, the incident in Florida. Um, they will be reviewing their standard policies and procedures with the school administration next week uh, to go over the incident review see what they can learn from the incident review see if there's anything that they've learned from that when they when they address that with the administration he said again that would happen sometime next week within their uh, back in session is that pretty well standard practice Paul uh, I, yeah absolutely I, I think they do have an active shooter um, uh, Response program. Response program. Right. And, but yeah, I think right. they actually have one set up in the spring. Right. Where they'll be dealing with the state police. But again, if there's a, if there's anything that they've learned um, from this recent incident, they would they would bring that into the, if they need to tweak anything with their response. Yeah. Well, let's hope they learn something. They haven't learned too much from the other ones, <clears throat> from what I'm seeing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Paul, I just have a, a question or a comment, and I guess because I, I brought it up a couple of meetings ago, I'm just going to renew a concern about the. Assessor's office, especially hearing now that we're now short of both a principal assessor and an assistant assessor. So I, I don't know what you folks are planning on it, but good luck. <laughs> I guess. Is yeah. The, I mean, I don't have an answer. Well, it's just a concern. I mean, we are out. We are interviewing. We did uh, the last. We interviewed somebody in the. We were our last person. Our first round of interviews for the assistant assessor today. We also had somebody in doing uh, the first part of, uh, of, our, of our second interview. We have uh, another individual coming in on Thursday for the second interview. We would hope to have a job offer out by Friday or early next oh, okay. week. So you're really moving on this? Yeah, we, 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 did met, we did not mess around whatsoever. We accelerated <coughs> this because okay. usually, you know, when we send out um, an interview notice, we usually give them like five days if you can make it. We sent it out and told them, you know, here it is in three days, be here. Um, and even with that second interview, we had the first interview with these people on Thursday. You know, the second interview was already scheduled on Tuesday for for, for one of the individuals. Um, so yeah, we are not wasting any time with that. Um, we will have a learning curve there. Um, you know, again because of the the reorganization that we're going through. Um, but I, I think we do have uh, two candidates right now who are involved with real estate. Um, so that's very helpful. Um, one of them is probably more involved administratively also, too, so very helpful in that regard. So Great. Um, keep our fingers crossed. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good update. Okay. I also saw in here from the, in the uh, a report from the police, and it talked about a detective who was getting involved in some training and having to do with um, exploited youth and uh, commercial exploitation of children uh, training. But they, they did mention that there was a position that they had uh, six um, for to be deputized as a U.S. Marshal and so forth. Now, with those, that kind of a thing, would they get paid dual paychecks, or, or is that, how does that? I, do you know if that merges? I, you know, I can ask the chief. I do not believe so that there's any extra compensation that goes to this individual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, they are part of a, a I would say, a task force, but. Um, so they, they are, give them additional training, but they, they no give additional training. We it gives the town some additional resources because 
um, we are now able to use a, a lot more information that we would, that the police department would not normally have had immediately. Oh, I see. You're right. Yeah. Um, so that's where you know the, the town is going to benefit uh, in that regard. I, th I think there's the chief has outlined seven benefits there. Um, but again, I, I can ask about the additional compensation. I do not believe that there's any additional compensation for, her, for mm -hmm. that individual being a, uh, a, a U.S. Marshal. But they would have to um, participate in certain things, I would, you know, certain uh, investigations, I would think, right? I, I would have to assume that there's some additional training that would be involved mm -hmm. um, and, and, yeah, and some other activities. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was just curious about that but uh, uh, is there any other questions about the town manager's report that uh, would come up no um, all right well we're covering ground pretty good here um, we are not going to have any, the subcommittee report Tom, Tom can I just make another sub a different subcommittee report oh yes you can so the, there was a subcommittee formed it was actually a joint meeting with the school committee on tax ceiling and how to address the, the potential uh, coming up to the tax ceiling. So the, okay. the group met, it was, there was, I think, six or seven of us. Paul was there and, and mm -hmm. Mario Mazza was there and, and Superintendent O'Shea was there and Marie, myself, uh, and the chair of the school committee, uh, Marjorie Gut Grodsky and, and uh, Russ Dupere were there. And mm -hmm. we, we put together the list of the, the Skills, the the people, the, the the responsibilities of in town that we would like to see participate in this meeting. Uh, we're certainly circulating that, but we're also looking for some citizen participation. And so there was a request went out, and I don't know, I don't know if it's been in the paper yet, but it will be shortly. Looking for citizens who want to participate in this tax ceiling uh, committee, and it's not really a, a committee so much as a task force. I think. Mm -hmm. is the way we, right, we put that. Right. So the task force is essentially going to be able to select or, you know, absorb some of these folks. But the next meeting is scheduled for <clears> March 28th, and at that time we hope to move forward. We did pretty much set our uh, our, our mission statement. We're putting together a, uh, a website or a page on the Web town, mm -hmm. town website that will cover what the mission is of the, of the program and some of the mm -hmm. things we're trying to do. So. All right, so that's great. And so in, in this preliminary meeting, did the, you get any indication of the type of qualifications or experiences a person should have, or is it really just It, it really is. I think we want somebody who's got some, infer, some, some knowledge of other way that the town works, but we're really looking for input. I mean, one of the things we're looking for is participation, for example, from uh, a couple of the unions in town because that, that mm -hmm. was Superintendent O'Shea's suggestion, a great suggestion. I mean, okay. potentially the, the the recommendations that come out of this could impact impact the employees of the town. Mm -hmm. But but from a residential point of view and residents' point of view, it really is the a question of you know as we kind of look forward at what some of the potential options are. You know, some mm -hmm. of them do impact the the nature of the town and tax rates. And do you move things out of the tax? bill into fees or do you just cut back on your spending or do you how do you how do you approach this 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 potential or this upcoming ceiling situation and so mm -hmm. I think we just wanted general people in town who had a feel for you know what the what the priorities of the town ought to be all right but in in the meetings we also talked about the high the costs of health insurance and so someone who was interested in health insurance also or, or kind of yeah, I think so, but, I, but, but we're, but we're not really going to approach that so much. I think we'd outsource, outsource that to a, a, a another group. I think it was a you know a looking at you know how would we might potentially defer some costs or or look at uh, there were, there were things in there about additional revenue, but it's all preliminary. We haven't really pinned down the the direction of, that we want to go in. I think the mm -hmm. task force is going to have a component of. More revenue, less spending, spending in different ways, not tax-based. That, you know, we're going to get to this solution through probably a combination of four, five, or six different things. I don't think there's one answer that's going to solve this problem. And so, mm -hmm. I think we need people with a variety of have their mind open to do a variety of approaches. Mm -hmm. Good. And, and Paul, you were there. Did you have anything to add in terms of, you know, thinking about the types of people from the community that might? Want to volunteer? Um, wasn't so much thinking about the types of volunteers uh, to to uh, to participate. Stephen and I were more brainstorming on 
um, the idea is that we have maybe to um, reduce that so-called deficit that we foresee. Mm -hmm. um, that's where our concentration was more in that regard, the actual numbers as opposed to the composition of the of the group. Okay. I mean, I thought it was a great idea to have the uh, obviously the employee groups re represented there. Um, they are a stakeholder. Um, the more that they realize where we are and how it all works, you know, the better off we're going to be. Um, because collective bargaining is, you know, the biggest ticket item we have. Mm -hmm. so. So, 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 yeah, <laughs> and I think we were also going to have liaisons from our state legislators because oh, right. part they of what we're doing it involves potentially looking for some relief in, through the legislature and, 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 you know, everything from total relief to, you know, maybe certain certain elements of your of your budget are exempt from the two and a half calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it can be anything from one extreme to another. Yeah, but if there was someone in town who knew a lot about union negotiation too, I mean, it might mm, yeah. be interesting. I mean, it might be an interesting group for them to meet with and talk with. And um, but it's nice that it's it's building up in terms of the membership, and um, <coughs> that's a good start, Mark. Yeah. Thanks for reporting on that. Any other subcommittee reports? Uh, mm. No. Um, so. Then we'll look at um, a motion, I guess, to adjourn, because uh, we've covered everything as far as I can see. Um, so moved. Okay, seconded? Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjournment? Debbie, you in favor? Okay, well, um, thank you for watching tonight. Um, hopefully you learned something about infrastructure needs and, and uh, borrowing money. Uh, so uh, thank you and good night.